All right. So playing uh, Archeon the Everchosen, Warriors of Chaos, Archeon. Um, going to try and confederate all of these lords. So Archeon and Bellacor have the ability to confederate Chaos Warrior lords. But if you play as the other lords, I think they don't. They don't have the ability to confederate. Only Bellacor and Archeon so far. I don't know if they're going to eventually fix that and make it so that everyone can confederate or more lords can confederate. But I think at the moment it's just those two. Um, Gonna put um, uh, gonna put on end, ultimate end game on uh, turn fifty to sixty, two hundred percent. So it's the hardest ultimate end game. Playing on legendary very hard, um, but I'm gonna put it a bit later, turn fifty to sixty. I think that's about right. So the goal of the campaign is gonna be to confederate all of the legendary lords, right? Um, and then you know, assuming we successfully do that, then invade the Southlands and you know wipe out the world and everything destroy the world. And so basically what I want is for the end game to kind of trigger just around the time that we've nearly confederated all the lords or, or whatever. And then, so then it'll be like time for the ultimate face off between, you know, all of the combined uh, legendary lords of chaos versus, you know, all of the, all of the races of the, of the living put together. Well, and the undead. So yeah, anyway, it's, that's the plan. I think only two of them because they're undivided. Uh, yeah, I think I think that was why maybe that was part of the reasoning why they did those first two. But I think that like you know, I suspect that they would you know do more than that like later on. Like you know, like there's no reason that sort of Azazel and Sigvald couldn't confederate each other because they're both Slanesh kind of thing, you know, that kind of stuff. But I don't know. I, I, yeah, I think they might eventually get um, get you know, it might eventually get to expanding or changing some more but yeah i don't know but yeah archeon um archeon sort of i think in the law that's sort of archeon's thing he um is it archeon i always say i kind of always start saying archeon but i guess it's archeon it is time we march south let the quivering fools know we come to tear down their nation slay their kings and ravage their mortal remains <laughs> He's always seeing into the ravaging of the mortal remains. I feel like it's just, I feel like it's unnecessary, you know? Um, oh yeah, so when you first start your Archeon campaign, first thing you should do is go in here and recruit two extra units. So you don't really need them for this first battle, but you can have two extra units before the first battle. So it just makes you, uh, you know, slightly stronger. So you may as well. You have Prince Ogax in here to uh, help out. How about the team? And we'll just make sure the difficulty is on the right difficulty. Yeah, very hard. This, uh, if you've been playing around with the stats and stuff, sometimes it carries over to the next campaign and messes up the game. So it's worth a check. Uh, so, it's interesting, you can actually auto-resolve this and get low. I wonder if that's actually better. I don't know. I feel like low tends to not be that low a lot of the time, you know? Let's fight it. Um, started on the Arcane campaign. Yeah, I just, I think um, uh, what I've been doing sometimes lately is just like when I wake up and I sit down and I, I'm like about to start the story, like if I'm going to start a new campaign, instead of like planning it, like I'll plan, I'll think about the plans for a few different campaigns, but then like instead of planning it, sometimes I'll just, you know, um, sit down at the computer and just be like, what do I feel like playing right now? And yeah, I know. I just felt like playing Archeon. So, <laughs> so that we went to we went for the Archeon idea. Um, so yeah, so we got ultimate end game gonna happen somewhat randomly between what was it, turn forty to sixty? No warning, so it was pop up. Um, and what was the other thing? Um, and um, I was thinking also of maybe restricting um aspiring champions a little bit just because i really love aspiring champions but i feel like especially in the later game they become a little bit too easy to recruit and you don't really like they kind of lose their specialness a little bit you know and also i like for me anyway i end up recruiting entire armies of um aspiring champions and stuff um which is cool which is actually pretty fun but um yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to make it like a challenge or anything, like a specific challenge or anything, but 
think I'm going to try to like limit the amount of uh, sparring champions that I I have at least in the early game. Maybe we'll change. Maybe we'll have different phases. Like in the early game, we'll go a bit more lo-fi, and then once the end game kicks off, then we'll just be like no rules now, kind of thing, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, that could be a good one. Maybe I'll make it so in the early game, like in the pre-end times, I'll make it that you can only can only recruit aspiring champions from upgraded like you can only upgrade to like marauder then um chaos warrior then show you know then chosen or aspiring champion so you have to actually level them up by experience and maybe you can only have like one per army or something i don't know i haven't yeah but anyway but whatever and then maybe later on we'll get rid of that restriction once we um once the end in times kicks off and that way you can have the best of both worlds we can kind of have a bit more unit variety and variety of play, but then we're not restricting ourselves from eventually having, you know, all the big bads at the same time. Yeah, I think that, I think for me, I'm really into this idea of campaign pacing at the moment. So it's like cool to like, you know, have like early game use Marauders and crap and then late game use different stuff, you know? I think that's pretty cool. Oh yeah. Um... Yeah, actually, so how we do this without taking a lot of damage. I think I, I always like go into this thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to be clever somehow and not take a lot of damage. And then I just forget and just have a massive brawl and take a lot of damage. I think the idea is to try to sucker out their health striders um, and um, and gank them so that they're just gone. And then um, the demonettes are faster than everybody else, so we could potentially get the demonettes and their lord away from all their infantry as well if we were really smart. But I don't know. I don't know if we'll be able to cheese it that much, but we can try. So I, li I like to think that the first battle is the the first battle like determines. If I drop this, they're just gonna dodge it, aren't they? Yeah, I like to think the first battle like determines how well the campaign's gonna go. Like this is like the omen, the omen for the rest of the campaign. Oh, these guys can't hide, so there's no point. Wonder how close I can get with this guy. Maybe he can like. Hmm. I reckon if I charge these demonettes, that would actually work. Alright, well that was a pretty good exchange. The mineral damage. You got those uh you got those demon, that's pretty good. Nights out so we can cycle charge, but it's hard work. Yeah, 
Okay's uh holding up pretty well. Doing okay. Break their souls. Obliterate them. Alright, I think we got him. Can single target the spell on the little bit? Yeah, I was trying to single target them, but um we got a little bit too close to the um to the demonets and pulled them out and then I thought it was nice to just eliminate the demonets while we got while they had the chance, so I think that worked out pretty well. Not exactly flawless, but uh I mean these um these health striders, um yeah, I feel like the health striders are essentially just dogs, you know. They they're they're fast and they're okay, but they just they take a lot of damage. Gotta catch them all, that's right. I wish Arkhan didn't start with Great Weapon Chaos Warriors. Mm, he doesn't. He starts with Halberd um, Chaos Warriors of Corn. Is it the Halberds you don't wish you, wish you didn't start with? Oh, I could have killed more of them and got more replenishment, I just realized. Oh. That looks pretty good now, actually. Just the Hellstriders that got wrecked pretty much in Arkhan. But yeah, if we killed those guys there, we could have got an extra few hundred points of um, replenishment. Alas. Oh, actually, no, they changed it so that Archeon doesn't get replenishment from demons anymore. So we've only got two buttons. So we only get replenishment from uh, Norska and Warriors of Chaos. So yeah, we've got to keep an eye out for that as well. Um, plus 100 XP. I wonder if that 100 XP is actually worth anything to us. Um, I'm sort of tempted. I think I'm tempted to take the money. It's, it looks like he just like sm stomped her into the ground and like a little bit of magical essence came out or something. Just like Space Marine combat boot stomped her into the ground. I know where he's whiskey. Scarband, <laughs> Scarband would be Charizard. Um, so, yeah, so getting the extra experience is quite important for, um, Chaos, isn't it? My so I'll try and, uh, I'll have this do that. Get that. Now the end All right. Um, yeah, I don't think we can... I don't have anything. You don't start off with anything unlocked. I actually played um I've actually played Archeon pretty recently, so probably got some good learnings from that to apply apply to this campaign. Which map we got? Oh okay. Yeah, this is not the not the easier one. But this is still uh you know, it's still fine. I don't know, has anyone got like a good strategy for this one? I don't, yeah, I don't really have a super good strategy. Just go left side at the bottom, slightly less towers. That's about it, you know? Um, I think I heard somebody else say they like to go in the middle at the top as well. I think the um, attack every, attack from every direction is not bad on um, on some uh, minor settlements, but yeah, I don't know. Don't tend to like it too much on major fortresses. Nikari, we can't confederate. Um, you can only confederate the warriors of chaos lords. So Sigvald, Valkyr, you know. Actually, that's a really good point. Um, should we go east or for west first? Maybe I should do a quick poll. Um, gotta confederate them all before they die. 
go east first. Go west first. Split forces. Go both. So yeah, so I don't know, is it better to go... I feel like it's, e it's probably easier to go east and go for village first. But I don't know if that's... But I mean, there's probably like more... Or go south, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's, so there's Azazel... Azazel Azazel's to the south-ish. Azazel and Festus are to the south. Um, actually, yeah, actually, yeah, I forgot. We should have. I should have put it south as well. Wait, no, we need to do a new poll. <laughs> Wait, so I need to do the new. I need to redo the poll. Sorry. Um, so a new poll. Confederate them all before they die. Hopefully. Go east first, village, go west first, for Sigvald and Valkyrie. South for Festus and as a result. Okay. So yeah, so we can yeah, so I guess we could go east first for Kolek and Kolek and uh, village. We could go west first to get Sigvald and then Valkyrie. Or we could go south first to get Festus. Uh, get Azazel and then Festus, and then maybe go across and get um, Bellicor as well. Isn't Valkyr the most likely to be wiped out first? Yeah, I don't know. I think Valkyr's Valkyr's probably pretty likely to get wiped out. Um, Festus is pretty likely to get wiped out. Um, but yeah, I think I feel like uh, Bellicor usually lasts a fair while. Uh, I think. Um, not sure about village. I think Kolek usually lasts a fair while. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't usually usually attack from this direction. Kind of looks interesting. Kind of looks fresh. But yeah, I think this is my normal way because you can sort of come in from this direction. You have slightly less towers on you, and you can just push through the doorway and and all that. Um, I mean, how many towers is we? So, yeah. So, potentially, if we go here, we're potentially only getting hit by one tower. Whereas, if we go here, it's kind of the same ish, I guess. But you're probably going to get hit by two towers. Most of my playthroughs I've seen Valkyrie, then Festus, then Azazel, and the rest last 100 plus turns. Hmm. Okay, so maybe, maybe the question is not. Which, but well, see, that's the thing. I don't think we could. Mm. Yes, I don't think we could rescue Valkyrie and Festus. Like, and, you know, if we go for one or the other, I don't know if we can rescue the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably don't need to really worry too much about this. This. Uh, We don't really need to worry too much about this at all. Yeah, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to tank this tower for a while. Towers don't really do much, do they? Your 
the Dark Gods! I'm gonna see more chaos in all directions. Yeah, I feel like all directions does sound pretty good. Village is normally fine in last ages. All right, well, so maybe, yeah, so maybe, we'll, yeah, just Colic normally lasts all right, doesn't he? Okay, what about in terms of bringing them back to life? Um, they can all be they can all be brought back to life, right? Doors are open. Those doors got open pretty fast. Alright, we'll try and just get in first. Just squeeze as many guys in there as we can. Try and just run him over here. This is a bit of a mess. A bit of a mess. Alright, let's try and get some of those down up here. This, uh, I can try and hope just gonna try and uh, spirit leash the cavalry a little bit. I don't know if it's gonna work super good, but we'll try. If we can get another, uh, there we go. You know, Searing Doom on that nice little pack, pipe pack. Well, yeah, I mean, you could have got to push our cavalry out to be able to move a little bit, but, uh, not to be. Somebody said Kinslayer. He said Kingslayer. Kill the southerners. Kill the southerners. Take their eyes. Yeah, these infantry are not pushing through. I try and see if we can pull these guys out of the the Chaos Knights tank a bit. Yeah, I should have saved that for a second. Try and pull the curse warriors out now. They could get some. They get some shields back up. Maybe we can get a cycle charge in there. Hey, Jesus, the Dark Prince for glory. Indeed. Uh, thanks for this, the uh, super chat, buddy. Cheers. Yeah, I shouldn't have used that spirit leech. That was a mistake. Uh, a spawner. Um, very low on health, but they've still got nine entities, so if we can pull them out... Uh, well, actually, pull them, let me pull them back this way. Um, yeah, if we can pull them out... Oh, they're already down to seven. Yeah, I mean, we can pull them out before they lose too many more entities. Could have got about a four, that would have been nicer. There we go. Right, good stuff. Go east first to Village and Colic. See, so, yeah, I think I feel like going east first would be sort of is sort of easier. East first is kind of the easiest way to go. Um, 
West first to Sigvald and Colt. Like, I think a Valkyr dying probably is a pretty good chance. I feel like Sigvald usually well lasts a while, but I think Valkyr potentially could die pretty early. Um, but also, I feel like Valkyr is like a long way away. Like, it's a I feel like it, going west feels like a long way. Like, going south for Festus and Azazel and maybe going. <laughs> Ever, it's now a complete tiebreaker. Twenty-five percent for all of the four options. That's not very useful. Perfect chaos. Hero West, Army East. Oh, you want to try to confederate them through diplomacy? I don't think that's possible. I think you can only diplomacy. I think you can only confederate them through killing. You have to wipe out all of their settlements. Everybody's revival besides Festus, Sigvald, and Village. Oh, really? Thanks a lot, Blackwell. So, yeah, um, that's really good information. Hmm. So, if everyone's revival except Festus, Village, and Sigvald, then it really becomes a question of which one of those do you think is the most likely to get wiped out first? For chaos. Syrians are. Um, I kind of like to really go ham on, um, I kind of like to really go ham on the souls, souls gained from battles. Um, but what else is important? I guess getting magic early is pretty important. We get some burning head going. That'd be pretty pretty nice, wouldn't it? Just some basic burning head, maybe. Um, Got to get experience and hearts of iron first, though. Experience and the oh yeah, dominating presence. Yeah, you want to kind of want to take heart dominating presence first. Mm. Um, hearts of iron. Nah, I don't prioritize hearts of iron. Um, but. Um, having said that, getting Hearts of Iron, and he's also got a, uh, his own personal trait somewhere. Doesn't he have his own special? Oh, or maybe it's, or maybe it's. Um... I thought he had one that was like a fifty percent um, up to up, uh, fifty percent vigor loss reduction for, for something. Or maybe it's a hero trait or something. Doesn't he have another, um, I thought they had, he had another Vigilus reduction that stacks with Hearts of Iron that made it extra good. But I might be thinking of something else. Nah, it might be, uh, might be a hero, um, might be a hero trait. Like, I'm pretty sure one of the, uh, I'm pretty sure one of the Path to Glory traits is, um, yeah, like Vigilus reduction for something. Maybe it was that that I was thinking of. Nah, not for him, for his army I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's some way you can get like 50%. Maybe, or maybe I'm thinking of a different character. But yeah, I, th I think there might be, I think there might be a, um, a path to glory skill for these exalted heroes where they can get one that gives you bigger loss reduction for chosen or something, or... <laughs> uh, but yeah, experience is a good one to get early. Um, and then, yeah, I might go for... I might actually go for Searing Doom upgraded, fully upgraded, get at least, and then get at least Burning Head going, and then circle back for um, the extra souls. Now the end times come. For chaos. All right. Um, I haven't got much choice for technology, so I guess we'll just go for that one. And... We have much damage? Oh, we got a bit of damage. We can go for uh, casualty replenishment rate for our marauders. For starters, and then um, the other one we want to get is this one, the Ruinous Bulwark. Gives us the Shatterstone on all of our armies and the missile resistance on all of our armies as well, which is pretty good. 
Did it cause fear? I guess that's kind of okay. Hmm. The rifts are pretty cool, although we do have the um, Chaos Dwarf endgame that's going to go off somewhere between turn 40 and turn 60, so we can potentially get um, some... Ooh. I kind of want to... <laughs> Slanish Lord could be kind of cool. Um, but nah, we really want to go for a... Um, death. A death... Um, Um, yeah, go for a death caster. And then we'll um, transition him into Nova later on. He's our first lord. And, uh. We shall weave the fates. He shall be known as one chasing. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Pronounce it. Maybe it's that's one Chaisen. I don't know how you pronounce it, but yeah, we know who it is anyway. That's Jesus. No. All right, and there's no diplomacy or anything to do really with the kings. Delectable. Oh, we could peace out with these guys. You require something. Uh, they, don't become, they don't want to become our vassal there. How divine. See, I think last time I allied with these guys, and that was a mistake. Um, I think this time we need to just yeah vassalize them as fast as possible. Von Scheißen literally means of shit in German. Yeah, but this is Von Scheißen. Totally different. It's got no S in it. We should um maybe we should change his name then. That's name. Hey, he's Nord Megatheon. <laughs> um, um Alright, we need to um alright, we need to take this to, it sounds too much like von Scheissen, so I, I that's fair that's fair enough. We'll um how about we make it just von Chesson? You know who it is. Lord Megatheon. <laughs> Megatheon. I think we can... Um... <laughs> I might just lose the... Um... Uh, uh... Yeah, no, that still works. Yeah, actually, that kind of, that's not too bad. Actually, maybe I won't. I'll drop the Lord. I'll just make him... I just have one name. Megatheon. Boom. He's not, a lord. He's not a lord. You haven't earned it yet, Steven. You've got to murder. You've got to murder more um, enemies of the gods first before you'll become a lord. Just a foot soldier right now. Um, thanks a lot for the um, super chat, man. So uh, you're a legend. Uh, much appreciated. And uh, hopefully you will win glory. Megathion. Yeah, there we go. Archeon and Megathion. Oh dear. Um, alright. So, yeah, so I think last time I tried to uh, get a bit clever and and um, vassalize uh, ally with the Slanesh faction, and that just didn't work. Like, I was hoping to transition into vassalization later on, but it never worked. So, we're going to learn from that mistake and just uh, murder them this time. Onward to destruction. 
Just go, yeah, we'll just go after them. I mean, it's it's simple but effective. Just go after the go after your starting enemy and keep going after them until they're all dead. It's pretty much uh, it's basic, but it's effective. Um, so we can recruit these dogs now, or we can recruit these dogs next turn. But there is a 20% chance of new dogs every turn, right? So, um, and but there's only a maximum of one dogs in the in this pool. So, if we if we wait till next turn, we'll save 102 gold upkeep. But if we hire them now, then there's a 20% chance that new dogs will pop up next turn, so we could have even more troops. So you know, it's a bit of a bit of a um, either or. Um, yeah, so there's no other recruits in this, in this, um, there's no other recruits in this land yet, so we can't really get a second army going yet. But, uh, go all directions at once seems to be the consensus. Um, so yeah, I think I will try and go all, all directions at once. But, the first army, like, we're not going to be able to instantly recruit three full, full battle groups and go in all directions instantly at, at first. So, you know. Um, obviously one army, the first, like the first stack has to go one direction. Um, there's nothing else to do really, is there? Just end the turn. Uh, hey, so like, um, no, I haven't played the Nagash mod, no. You can collect first. Well, I'm sort of thinking, because like what Blackwall said, Blackwall said that, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Festus, Village, and Sigvald are the three that can't be revived. So I feel like those three are the, to the priority. Unfortunately, they're all in completely opposite directions from each other, so that's not like super helpful, but. Should we go for raiding or should we go for magic? Yes. I feel like magic is probably My lies this where it's at. Dominance. Be a reckoning. Are you a god? Ah, ah, yes. Funny thing is that Village's starting position is the location where you revive a Zazel. That is weird. <laughs> what, the, why, what the hell is that? Why is that? I'm sort of feeling like we should go for Festus first, because I feel like Festus is going to get wiped out. I mean, well, he's not necessarily going to be wiped out, but I feel like, I feel like it's going to be a bit of a rush to try to rescue Festus before he goes down. It's a trick with um it's a bit of a trick with these guys as well because if um like if you're on your way to killing them, like and they're on their last settlement, and then some third party like AI faction wipes out their last settlement, then I assume you don't get the confederation and then they're just dead then. <laughs> so we've got to like make sure that we don't um make sure that doesn't happen. Um cast dwarves aren't that far, I usually pop at them to get artillery. Yeah, actually that's a good call, cast dwarfs. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so our technology just completed. So this turn basically is the turn when we should be able to get some um, students. So um, yeah, so with um, with chaos, we might be able to actually leverage that a little bit later later on in the game to get more students. But it doesn't. I mean, it's pretty fast to get through the technologies anyway. But it's always nice to get them earlier. Hmm. What level is this? 
It's just level one, so I'm gonna sack it. Chaos Warriors have hearts? I feel like that's racist against Chaos Warriors. Oh, hey, Geraldo. Sorry, I was had my uh, I had my Twitch chat covered covered up, um, so I didn't see you. Didn't see you or everything. Um, yeah. What's the number one thing that I want added to Shadows of Change? Um, I don't really care that much about any of the factions in Shadows of Change, honestly. Like, they're not like, on, they're not like super high priority for me, like, um, like Dwarfs and Empire are. Um, so I'm not too bothered, really. Um, but, um, the, probably the two things I'd like to see most would be a melee hero added for Cathay and a, and the, and a, and a rework for Cathay, um, uh, well, yeah, just real quickly, like, probably the top things I'd want for, yeah, Shadows of Change would be a melee hero added for Cathay, um, a bit more of a rework for Miao Ying and Xiao Ming, because I feel like both of those lords are really lackluster now compared to, um, compared to, um, uh, the other Cathay lord. But, um, for, for, um, for Zeech, um, I'd really like an extra hero to be added, um, like a, uh, like a um, cultist hero uh, no they already got a cultist hero sorry just like some other hero like an extra hero would be cool um, four heroes and maybe have that hero also get added to village as well and like and maybe to the undivided warriors of chaos as well um, yeah like a new hero for chaos and for Kislev I don't know I feel like Kislev is all messed up I don't really even know how to fix Kislev <laughs> I just, I feel like, I don't know, I just don't like how the whole, I don't really like the whole beast theme that Kislev's got now, like of forest beast spirits and stuff like that. I feel like the patriarch, I feel like the patriarch and the, you know, the Ungols and the Kossars and the, um, the Gospodars and all that kind of stuff was very Kislevite, but now I feel like the, basically the whole Mother of Stankia DLC, the whole theme of it and everything, it just doesn't feel very Kislevite to me. So yeah, I don't really know what I would want to get added to that. <laughs> Um, hello, what would you recommend for a person who mostly played historical Total Wars before? Warhammer 3 or Warhammer 2? Uh, Warhammer 3. Warhammer 3 is the newer game. Warhammer 2 is like the old game. So yeah, so I wouldn't recommend Warhammer 2 to anybody. Um, Warhammer 2 is a fantastic game, but you know, Warhammer 3 is the game that we play now because Warhammer 2 is the old game. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, Warhammer 2 is arguably still better in some ways, but it's just an old game, you know what I mean? Like it's like why would you want to like yeah like you can play you can play a game that came out like five years ago that's been updated a million times and is really polished and really great or you can play the brand new game that still needs more updates to get into that polished state but it's the new game you know what I mean? so it's like yeah like Warhammer 3 is the new game it's much bigger it's got heaps more extra features and stuff that Warhammer 2 doesn't have and, and all that kind of stuff so yeah so um I don't know, if you've got something, if, if you really hate, like, bugs and stuff, then I get... Oh, but there's heaps of this. There's really shitty bugs still in Warhammer 2 as well, so... Yeah, anyway, long story short, Warhammer 3. Warhammer 3 gives you the big map, which includes the entire map of Warhammer 2, plus about 50% more on top of that as well. Alright, um... Yeah, I might fight this battle as well. Just to see how we go. Hey, Angrim. Yeah, good to see you too, buddy. Um, yeah, campaign's going well so far. Only the first couple of first couple of turns in. Yeah, Wormer Three is um, Wormer Three is just it's still a work in progress. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I think they just still they need to keep tweaking the way that the campaign AI works and and stuff like that. But I have been noticing. Um, I, I don't know about end, like end, end, like super late game, but I've been noticing in the mid game, I've been enjoying the AI's little invasions with like five or six armies. Um, I feel like that's a good, like, you know, around turn like 40, 35, 40 and stuff. Um, if you're not going like, if you're not going like real super cyan or like ultra, ultra aggressive, um, then, um, 
and then, then, then that sort of comes into your like back line away from where your main armies are then um, it's quite it can be quite scary um, and I think that's that's pretty enjoyable you know like I don't necessarily need like a grueling war where like the dwarves are just sending like 20 stacks at me like every second turn over and over again for like 40 turns straight and it's just like an endless grind of like just army and army you know i don't necessarily need that <clears throat> but i do need like occasionally a, you know a fairly strong battle force to pop up and threaten maybe a weak side of my empire or something so that i freak out for a moment and have to deal with it you know and that's happened to the last couple of campaigns that i've played now i've had you know sort of unexpected few stacks turn up at some point and then i've had to scramble to deal with it you know Mm. Uh, no, I'm playing uh, playing Warriors of Chaos, not Tomb Kings. Love the new AI formations. Yeah, I don't know what this is about, but yeah, it's funny though. Like that they do these weird formations, but it doesn't really. I don't feel like it really actually affects the battle difficulty much at all, which is interesting. Um. I guess, I don't know if that's a testament to how bad the AI, battle AI is normally or what, but yeah, it's like weird, like, I feel like this doesn't even really, I mean, it, it's obviously not that, I feel like this is not very optimal compared to the normal wide setup, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a bug. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes away next patch, um, but um, I don't think we're going to get another patch before Christmas. Nah, because CA have, CA have probably already gone on... Um, CA so yeah, probably gone already gone on there. Leave now. Yeah. So I've got a pretty good little uh, mobile, pretty good little cavalry formation going on now. Oh yeah, I noticed like a thing as well. I'll try it out now. Previously, I could rotate around a faction as much as I wanted, and they would just keep letting me rotate them. Whereas I noticed recently, sometimes they don't let me rotate them. Like I'll move around a bit, and then they'll just like attack. I don't know. We'll see how we go. We'll see if they do it this time. No, it seems like they let me. So what I, sometimes what I like to do is just keep moving around. Like if they take up a position on the high ground, I like to just keep moving around until I'm on the high ground and like push them off. Uh, would you suggest playing Cathay in World Empires or Chaos Realm for getting campaign achievement? Oh, I'm really not an expert. Sorry, Ungram. I don't, I literally don't care about achievements at all. I don't, I, I don't try and, I don't unlock them. I don't care if I get them, you know. I don't even really care about campaign victory unless the campaign victory gives me a, um, like extra heroes or something useful. Uh, so yeah, I'm probably not the one to ask about that. But um, but just in general, I don't. I pretty much always play um, Immortal Empires instead of Realm of Chaos because I just think that the Immortal Empires experience is better. You know, um, the only time I play Realm of Chaos is <clears throat> the only time I play Realm of Chaos maybe is if you haven't played the Realm of Chaos campaign before and you want to get the storyline because um because Realm of Chaos has the um has the like special little cutscenes and stuff um which are not you know they're they're not like full 3d but they're still like they've got pretty good little artworks and they've got good story um i think Lord. they're trying to avoid getting flanked by using this uh wall thing going on i wonder if i could cycle charge these uh these guys to death with dogs Oh, here we go. Got too close. Oh, <laughs> 
We can bash their lord with our um Fancy maneuvering here. Trying to stay away from these. Uh... Hit your souls! Wipe them out! Chaos Marauders! Now is our time! Gods of Chaos! You see, Hellscourges just always get wrecked. Kill the Cast Knights chop up these guys. 671. 671. Ah, okay, we might be we might be capped. Um I have hundreds of hours hundreds of hours in Immortal Empires, but only four hours in Realms of Chaos. Yeah, I'm a little bit like that too. Um yeah, I played um, I played Realms of Chaos a little bit at first because there was no Immortal Empires, but yeah. Chaos music makes you feel like the destroyer of civilizations, yeah. That's what we are. We're the ender of worlds. But yeah, this time we're gonna like, we're gonna get the band together first, collect all of our mighty champions. And then we can try to like attack everything at once. Oh. Um. Yeah, I think we'll just uh sack it and we'll try and get the Try and get the backspace on uh, Archeon so it doesn't move too far away. Oh yeah, we got a we got a student, right? Two students in Legend. Legendary Al Alakazai. That wasn't just an accident, but yeah. So we get. So I guess you can. Yeah, you'll sort of naturally just get to here on turn four and have a chance to get students when these guys level up on the same turn that you finished your technology. So. It kind of just works out nicely. I foresee destruction. Now, there'll be a reckoning. In vain. All right, cool. So we can um, hit that next turn with uh, while we're still leveling up our magic. So that's right. Um. Oh, there was another troll we could have grabbed. Didn't even notice. That's right. 
Twilight's cup. The gods smile. Um, I'm kind of... Can we... Are you good if we get some extra corruption? Kind of into corruption now, because the corruption gives you better better recruitment. So, um... Yeah, when we get some... I think the sorcerers give you corruption, don't they? So when we get some sorcerers later on, we can... Stack up some corruption. The storm of chaos gathers. Hey, Benji. How you going, buddy? Yeah, I think um, I think the Realm of Chaos is worth doing if you haven't done it before, or if you want to do the storyline for a particular faction. But but yeah, I just consider the Immortal Empires to be like the real game, you know, and the Realm of Chaos to just be like a side quest, you know, alternate version or whatever. So yeah, so for new players, I just I recommend they just go straight into Immortal Empires. But um, but yeah, I wish that they could transplant some of the narrative elements, like some of those cutscenes and stuff like that, into Immortal Empires. Uh, like I, I'm, I get that Immortal Empires is meant to be more of a sandbox open experience and not so much so story based and whatever. But at the same time, I reckon that you could, um, you know, you could have a bit more story in Immortal players while still leaving the um while still leaving the essential kind of um well still living the essential sandboxness you know yeah selling regions is not very satisfying for warriors of chaos um because the other factions don't really value these buildings too much um i don't actually does anyone know if um Yeah, is there, there's, are there any buildings that you can build as Warriors of Chaos that actually make these uh, settlements more value, valuable to sell? I don't think that there are. I think that anything that you build in there is going to cost you more money than you'll actually get back from the sale price, so it's like it's not really worth it. I don't want this Slanesh Lord just because. Just because. Because he's got the um, he's got the minus twenty five percent Slanesh, uh, cost of devotes to Slanesh. Um, but I mean, Slanesh melee lords aren't really that great, are they? Is, it, is there anything good about Slanesh melee lords apart from the fact they have like the coolest armor in the game? We could go like Iron Skin and go for a Corn Lord. That could be pretty cool. Oh, actually, maybe we'll go for. We we'll go for Fire. Go for a uh, Zinch Lord. Chaos. All right. So, what are we gonna do with Tech Tree? That's another another uh, question for your early game campaign. Um, so one thing that I've had recommended to me that I sort of agree with is to go for, um, oh, where is it? I thought it was over this area. Um, I think I'm thinking of a different tech tree. Um, the one that gives you the extra souls. Ah, here we go. Culling the weak. Yeah, souls gained from battles plus 20%. So that's quite a lot of souls. Um, eventually, we'll end up getting passive souls, a bit of passive souls from our vassals. Um, so you, you don't really have huge problems with souls with Archeon. But having said that, um, well, if you've got like ridiculous amounts of souls, you can kind of go... Um, you can go extra hard on the soul. Like you can switch around your gifts all the time and, you know, just you can... And you can upgrade all your guys more and stuff. Like, I, even though I can get a lot of souls, I still feel like I could, you know, I could spend more for sure. Uh, especially in the early game. So, yeah, I might, um, might go for that first. Just to get those souls a rocking. Um, 
But yeah, has anyone else got any other fam- favorite technologies they'd like to go for early? Another like non-sexy one that I like to go for is just the plus five percent campaign movement range. Um, apart from that, um, if you want to fix your economy, and well, not that we've got a bad economy, but you know, if you want more money, um, as soon as you get um, access to uh, maximum chaos gifts plus one over here, then you get the corn um, extra money from looting and sacking and stuff, which basically make you rich. Um, if we go for Slanesh, the Vows of Excess, then we can get the one that gives us 35% extra, percent extra campaign movement range. Um, and also these give us the ability to um, put to slot more th- to slot more gifts, which means that we can level up our um, our Eye of the Gods faster. We can power like the more gifts that we have active, the faster this will charge up. Does it tell you? It doesn't tell you what our total is at the moment, is it? No. Uh, yeah, so we'll go for the, yeah, I'll go for the souls first. What's the gain from ascending lords? Uh, I don't really ascend lords to demonhood just, just purely because of a, uh, like, just purely because of aesthetic reasons, because I really like warriors. But I mean, we could maybe ascend some people. Maybe if um, people who have named characters want to be ascended, I'll, uh, I'll let them ascend. They earn it. Um, but yeah, so another thing I want to do is get more, um, get more gifts, uh, uh, get more gifts going. Um, once we've got a bit more sustain in terms of our souls, that way we can, yeah, if we can get like you know, three undivided and like one of these other ones unlocked fairly early, then we can have four gifts going at the same time. So then we'll be getting like plus four per turn on um, on Eye of the Gods. So you know, get just getting those crazy buffs more often. It'd be kind of good if we could get that, you know, maxed out so that we're just getting buffs like constantly. What's the, what are the fastest is that you can actually get that, get that going? Um, but yeah, so if you want to just go for the most amount of gift possible earliest, then I guess go for, you know, for Gaze of the Dark Gods or Demon Pact. Um, there's only 16 turns, whereas it's 20 turns to get these ones. Yeah, I don't know. What's the what do you reckon is the best one to go for as well? Like if we wanted to go all the way down one one route. Get someone from beyond for the faction leader. I feel like a lot of these these in the, and they have these four sets. A lot of the things in the four set are not really very good. Anyways, um, <clears throat> we've got ten percent increased technology now. So that's not really going to do much in the short term, but that's all right. Yeah, souls and movement are two of my favorites to get early. Um, but it's, yeah, see, it's like with the movement, it's like, it's 5% extra movement, but it's also delays you from getting the Slanesh gift, which would give you 35% extra movement. Um, McGarthen's completed a whole bunch of challenges, apparently. What did he do? I don't see, he doesn't seem to have unlocked anything. Not really sure what's going on there, but it's alright. 
Syrians are gods. The storm of chaos gathers. Uh, is this their last settlement? Seems so. Ah, the slaughter begins. There'll be a reckoning. Unleash chaos. Asinine mortal. Wipe that out. Do you require something, fool? Alright, so we'll, um... Just, you just reach cell 5, yeah. My Glorious. Where's Carrick dumb? Oh, is it down here? Destroy. Can we just auto resolve this without taking. Uh, that wasn't too horrific. I'll take it. Um, yeah, so we'll subjugate. Make these our, our second vessel. Carrick Dum Dum, indeed. Alright. So, um, yeah, so now we've got this vessel. Um, Slanesh Corruption um, gives you increased income from buildings. So. I kind of feel like it's um I kind of feel like it's sort of cool to like put the slanish corruption in writhing fortress so that we can get more uh corruption from that more corruption and get more money but uh i don't know let the dark whispers of glory guide us to ascendancy acceptance Right. So, yeah, I guess we're going to take out this Skaven. And then, um, yeah, we can come down here, meet Uskalath, and then nip over here and take Festus. What was, um, go Col yeah, I mean, Colex pretty close. As well, but we need to. The problem is with the with the, the warriors of chaos factions is we have to actually defeat them. We can't just like it's not just a matter of meeting them. I mean, I should have moved through settlement before I um did that. Let us corrupt. By the eldritch I see. You get all the corruption bonuses because you're undivided. Uh, e what, what do you mean? Like, yeah, I was just saying, like, if we put, um, if we put Monolith of Bubonicus, if we gave that to Slanesh, which I just did, that means that we get the Slanesh corruption in here as well, um, and which gives us plus five percent income from all buildings. So that, and because we've got our like main income building here so we basically just gives us a bit more income but it's not really like a big deal or anything but yeah Uh, no worries, Hangram. Thanks, buddy. Sorry, I'm missing missing some chat over there on on, twi on uh, Twitch. Sorry, guys. All right. 
so we've got some basic um got some basic magic going on and yeah i kind of want to get into this these extra souls And some extra post battle loot is always good. It's nice to see some big numbers. The storm of chaos gathers. We're getting close to our capacity for money. I am the chosen of the gods. Yeah, these guys are getting left behind a little bit, but that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, so how about we take out the Skaven? Confederate the Gurumundi, Gurumundi tribe. What's the best way to take out this Skaven? Will we go like that one, then that one, or that one, then that one, then this one? There'll be a reckoning. <laughs> this time. Maybe this one, then that one. We shall weave the fates. I foresee destruction. Syrian's eye guides me. Oh, no, I don't want to vassalize the Skaven. I think I'll just... Oh. Yeah, no, I think I'll just wipe out the Skaven because there's just the Skaven corruption's annoying. I know, what do you guys think? Do you guys like to confederate these, um, to vassalize these, uh, Skaven here, or what? I feel like they're just a bit annoying, because the Skaven corruption's not really to us. And also, you know, they could do plagues and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Got a bit of a war chest going on. But not too much. Don't know if minus Kevin's can do um, plagues. Oh, okay, that's good. Oh, well, I mean, I guess if we put like, hmm. if we go. Hmm. It's a four region province, right? So if we give Pillar of Skulls to um, the cool, just so that they're a bit less likely to die, give Tribe Slaughter to um, to Slanesh, um, we take Karak Dumb, and then we just give, um, and we just vassalize them in the last settlement down the bottom, then um, then they'll, then we won't really get that much corruption, right? Because we'll have double undivided and Slanesh corruption going on there. We'll give all of the minor settlements to Slanesh. Oh, just because they'll make more money, you reckon? Then they, yeah, because the um, they'll be better. They'll be more via yeah. They'll give them more money. Yeah, good call. And also that way, and because they're more like kind of on the front lines as well, so it'd be good if they were a bit stronger. The cooler kind of a bit of a non-entity. They're not. We don't really need. Them. They can just be our little minions that guard. They can just. They're just here to like kill rebels if we get rebels spawning in our home settlement. Pretty, pretty much. It's their primary duty. <sighs> Annoying we can't quite make that um not quite make that one. Bring ruin. What? My Lord Sinch agrees. Spirit of Orca. Now they will see true power. I'll have this world. Yes, 
bring corruption. My destiny lies this way. You dare. <laughs> yes. Alright. How much money we got left? Still going alright. Norse skins are good for port settlements. Oh yeah, they get good money from the ports. What's uh, does anyone know what the actual percentage is for vassals? Like, I assume that the vassal income that you get is like a percentage of the vassal's actual income, but I don't know what the percentage actually is. Or, or maybe it's like a yeah, maybe it's more complicated. It's not a flat percentage, but it's like a some sort of you know. You recruited Chaos Sorcerer of Fire. Cool. Alright, that's good actually. We can upgrade him to be a, um, a Lore of Zeech. Is this trait? Evil Eyeball. I don't know what's. That's alright, whatever. Alrighty then. Um, let us. You have my promise. Sack this. Actually, can we sell this world to anybody? No. All right, we'll just take them on. Head on. I mean, surely we can just auto resolve that, right? He says, I might just fight it. Um, I think we just, um, yeah, we just finished, um, we just finished technology, so we could potentially get some more students this turn as well, which is nice. And um, we've already got two students, so we can give one to our new hero. We are getting, we're also getting extra research rate every time we confederate uh, every time we vassalize a new faction so we're you know with combining students and vassals we should get pretty fast um pretty fast technology Some menace belows. We'll wreck all the menace belows. And we'll be good to go. Mortal fool! For the chaos gods! The dark gods command me! God's call. Hey Stephen, uh, I'm not having a holiday or anything over Christmas, um, so yeah, I'll just be streaming pretty much every day. Um, I'll just, um, yeah, I, I usually try to have a day off every one or two days off every week, um, or you know, or none. <laughs> I try to have either zero, one, or two days off every week. Um, so yeah, so I'll probably, um, maybe have one night off somewhere or whatever, but, um, but yeah, no particular plans as yet. Um, yeah, I stream, I stream from, um, I stream from midnight until, um, like 
9 or 10 a.m. in the morning, so it doesn't really conflict with, you know, anything. Because my, cause my, family, my family aren't goths, so we don't do, like, midnight Christmas or anything. But yeah, so I'll just see how I go. If I get tired, um, or if I... Yeah, if I get a bit tired or whatever, um, I might have to have a day off to recharge. But, uh, but yeah, no, no particular schedule at the moment. It would just be like if I don't know, like if I um, if um, if you know, if I'm a bit tired and I know I've got like Christmas lunch tomorrow or whatever, and um, and I need to have a bit of recharge or whatever, then I might just you know have a short stream or or, or skip that day to have a rest before the before the Christmas lunch the next day, so I'm not a zombie or whatever, you know. Or if we go to like dinner with with family on Boxing Day and we stay out late that night or whatever and I'm feeling a bit worn down I might have the day off whatever but yeah it's like I don't have to I don't particularly have to like yeah my streaming schedule doesn't conflict with anything so I don't really have to have any days off particularly is there a specialized Christmas stream like a Christmas warband in Mordheim what would the what would the Mordheim Christmas oh well what would the Mordheim Christmas warband look like Which, which warband would be the best Christmas warband? I feel like Chaos would be the best. I feel like Chaos would be the best Christmas warband. Like, the, um, the henchmen could be like the elves. What? Mix of gingerbread and snowman, yeah. That sounds ideal. All right, I think that's all of our dwellers below. We've managed to uh, upset the, we've managed to upset the Skaven now. These guys are all spears, but they're like only clan rat spears, so I'm kind of, I don't know. I mean, I probably shouldn't be charging cavalry into them. And on the other side, I probably shouldn't be charging um, these monsters into them, but I don't know. I feel like they're pretty shit, so. Oh, there you go, they're rattled anyway. And submission. Bottle 
Just uh, trying to this Lord. This is Lord's down. I think we're pretty much done. Oh, he's getting blogged. Giving him, uh, giving him a smackdown. Yeah, again, even though there's a spears, I'm just going to charge the cavalry in as well, try and break them. Um, see if we can get some terror going on now. This should be started with a cascade of breaking. Yeah, terror, terror. These guys are about to break terror. Um, awesome. All right, that'll be about it. And we can let uh, anybody who's capable of catching stuff get some more XP. We got 319. No, no XP on this one either. Yeah, I don't know. I still don't really know why. Uh, maybe they capped out already. Maybe yeah, I don't know. I'm not still really sure how it works. Whether it's like individual, like individual units maybe have a cap because like I think there is an individual unit cap like for auto resolve. Um, like you know, each unit can only have max get a maximum of like two thousand or two hundred XP or whatever you know per battle, but which I think applies to auto resolve. But I don't know. I can't remember. Now. I remember talking to people about it ages ago, but. Um, but yeah, but I'm not sure if that would be applied to melee, but mainly the normal battles as well or what. But uh, yeah, I think there's something in the code about like an XP cap for units. Um, but then also maybe separately from that, there's something going on where certain types of battles don't give you XP after the end battle comes up. But yeah, but I mean, most of the time you do get XP from killing, um, from killing stuff after the end battle, but yeah. That line begs for a burning head. Yeah, I didn't quite get the timing right with the burning head, unfortunately. I had to do a few non a couple of non-optimal burning heads, but you know, we still got a bit of damage in there. Bearded hero with German Santa name. I mean <clears throat> the Empire Mercs can get can have a white beard on their captain, but it's a pretty short beard. Oh, actually, Empire Mercs can get uh no the empire mercs can get a wizard but i don't know if the wizard can have a beard does anyone know if the empire mercs wizard can have a beard i think he's just got like a short yeah no i don't think he's got a beard another student very nice Yeah, I think we'll go this way and then we'll go around that way. Yeah, Arkan's pretty good. And he's um his voice he's got a really nice sounding voice as well. It's like this really like I don't know, it's just like yeah. Well I mean not really nice is the wrong word, but you know what I mean? He's got like a badass sounding voice. Full of rage and hatred. My prayers are answered. With a bit of like that helmet, a bit of helmet vibration, you know. It's funny with Chaos, um, oh, sorry, it's funny with Warhammer, like, you know, um, you know, I, sometimes when, you know, when you hear, when, like, non-Warhammer fans kind of come across Warhammer, they're, um, very, like, um, 
Oh, that's a lot of escaping. I kind of want to auto resolve it. <laughs> um, poison and glove it is. Oh man, this is uh, this is kind of hectic, isn't it? Maybe we should re recruit some more troops. student to our uh, wizard. Good. Now we see. So what's our technology now? 140. Is it how much technology do we get for each vessel? Plus 10. Yeah, so we've got two vessels, so plus 20, and then we've got two students, so another plus 20. And we get 24%, 25 extra souls for each vessel, so again, 53 souls per turn. So, and our gifts are costing us 50. So we're basically paying for our gift, um, breaking even on souls. You know, we get minus 50, but also plus 50. So it's working out. If you have to pick between Champions of Chaos and Chaos Dwarfs, which would you pick? Hey, Edgar, in terms of what? <laughs> if you mean in terms of which faction to play, well, today, obviously, I would pick, pick Warriors of Chaos. Um, if you mean like, if I could only play one of those two for the rest of my life, I don't know, but yeah, I think I need more clarification. What's the, what is the question? What am I, what am I, what basis am I picking the one? If you mean, um, if you mean, um, which one would I recommend to a new player who doesn't have either of the DLC, I'd probably recommend, um, Chaos Dwarfs as the better DLC, but they're both pretty good. If it's which faction is the shortest, then I'd go for Chaos Dwarfs. Yeah, no, it's like... Yeah, what, what do you mean? Do you mean like value for money for the DLCs? Or do you mean like lore-wise? You know, there's a lot of different... Yeah, I feel like almost every question people ask, it's like, you know, there's like... It's like, it depends what you mean. There's like so, diff so many different ways to like look at everything. Chaos Dwarfs are the shortest. I think everyone... There you go. There you go, Edgar. Everyone agrees cast doors are the shortest. <laughs> That's the answer. Nah, I don't know. Yeah, what do you, yeah, what do you, what do you mean? I don't know. I, I, I really like them both. Um, all right. Um, hey, Zomtama. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for, um, yeah, I'm glad you like the videos. Cheers, buddy. They do have pretty tall hats. That's true. Um... I really want to auto-resolve this battle because I'm, I'm lazy. And also I like to be ruthless. But uh, I really shouldn't auto-resolve it, should I? Ah, uh, no worries, I'm coming. Thanks for dropping by, buddy. Thanks for saying hello. Uh, I was wondering what DLC to buy for the Christmas theme set. Ah, okay, no worries, yeah. want to get one of them, but I don't know what one to get. Tomb King seems pretty nice to me too. Um, yeah, well, you've, you're, it looks like you're on the right track. So I'd say Tomb Kings, Warriors of Chaos, and Chaos Dwarves are three of the best DLCs in the game. Um, so, so you, you know, kind of can't go wrong. But, um, but yeah, out of those, I'd say, it's, yeah, I'd say, out of those, I definitely would not be, for me, it wouldn't be Tomb Kings because I just like Warriors of Chaos and Chaos Dwarves seems better than Tomb Kings, just by, you know, thematically or whatever but also i feel like both warriors of chaos and both and um chaos dwarves are probably better like more fun than the tomb kings overall um but um but yeah that's a hard one um yeah warriors of chaos well, warriors of chaos you actually need two dlcs right so yeah so it depends if you've already got the original warriors of chaos dlc um, and you've got the champ. Do you mean the Warriors of Chaos or the Champions of Chaos? Because there's, yeah, so Warriors of Chaos is two, actually two DLCs. There's Warriors of Chaos and then there's Champions of Chaos. So if you've already got Warriors of Chaos um, back from level one, and you just, then you get Champions of Chaos, then you'll have kind of everything. Alright, let's fight it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know, that's a hard one. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I really love Warriors of Chaos. They're probably like one of my favorite factions in the lore. 
Um, and if you, um, and if you, um, if you already have cha if you already have Warriors of Chaos base DLC with Archeon, Sigvald, and Kolek, then Champions of Chaos gives you four new lords. All of the four lords have nicely different starting positions, nicely kind of different um, mechanics that they can use and, and stuff like that. So that's all pretty good. But I don't know. I kind of it's a, that's a really hard one. I think I'm just gonna leave it and say, look, either war either Warriors of Chaos or Chaos Dwarfs. They're both, they're both really good. I don't think you'll have a bad time either way. You know, so I'd say just whatever, whichever one you feel like playing first, I would go for. Because I would highly recommend you get both of them. You know, like if you're going to skip any DLCs from, if you're going to skip any DLCs out of the many DLCs that there are for Warhammer 3 and Warhammer 2 and Warhammer 1, then I would definitely not be skipping Warriors of Chaos or Chaos Dwarfs because they're two of the, like, the best factions and two of the best DLCs in the game. But yeah, but so, but so out of those two, it's just a matter of whichever one you feel like playing first. And then you should definitely get the other one next. That's That would be my that would be my thing. Um, but yeah, Chaos Dwarfs... Chaos... Yeah... I'd probably... I think Chaos Dwarfs would probably edge you edge out for first. I'd take Chaos Dwarfs first, and then Chaos Warriors second. Because Chaos Dwarfs are really different from all of the other factions in the game, but also super fun. Yeah, yeah, that's true. If you like turtling more, then get definitely Chaos Dwarfs. If you like, um, not that you have to turtle, but just you've got the option. Whereas uh, with Warriors of Chaos, it doesn't really work very well for tur turtling empire building type campaigns. I'm trying. I'm going to try to do a bit of an empire building campaign right now. See how it works. All right, we'll try and stack these guys up. And just tank these. Um, actually, if we don't, if we route, if we route these guys off the field without killing them, I wonder if that will count towards activating the. I mean, they have four. I assume they have four. There's one more. Yeah, no worries. I've got, yeah, no, you've got a really good decision to make there. You can't go wrong. Both Chaos Warriors, the Champions of Chaos and Chaos Dwarves are both awesome fun. Yeah, if I was in your situation, I'd probably go Chaos Dwarfs first, and then I'd get Champions Chaos next year or whatever, or next DLC you buy. Next time there's a special. Have they got a nuke? <laughs> Don't say that. Jesus. Hey, Joel, the Winter Sale coming soon? Yeah, Winter Sale coming soon. Yeah, the good pull. Yeah, hey, Edgar. That's a good call. Maybe we should wait. You should wait for the sale, because you'll probably be 50% off. Joel also reckons that there's the Winter Sale starting like in two days, one or two days. So if you, unless you were, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you want to play now, then I'd probably just get it now. But <laughs> Hey, Warsmith. Without killing. Well, no, it's not, it's not because I don't want to kill them. It's just because I don't want to alert. I don't want to necessarily alert their army over there. Never heard of Arkhan's new life with Santa Chaos. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we should continue this campaign throughout the holiday season and make it all about Santa Chaos. Army of the Dark Gods! Army of the Dark Gods! I was watching... I don't know, is, is anyone... Um, yeah, does anyone... Can anyone confirm, is that right? The Winter Sales starts on 21st? Does anyone else Anyone else know about Winter Sales apart from Geraldo? Thanks a lot for that, for letting us know about that, by the way, Geraldo. That is valuable information. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people watching the streams, um, you know, are interested in these kind of questions. Um, and th yeah, thanks for the good question, by the way, Edgar. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people watching the streams are interested in these kind of questions. So they're really good to ask if not even just for yourself, but, you know, if anyone else is watching, they'd probably be interested in the in the conversation and hearing the, the points back and forth about different ones. And, and, um, and yeah, and, and sales, you know, I think 
I, I, yeah, I didn't really think about it too much because I've already bought everything all the time, you know. But um, but um, but yeah, I think there's often people watching that are interested in sales, and it's really good if we can uh, we can help people get good value. Hopefully, a big discount on shutters change. I'm actually that's really interesting. Actually, I'm really interested to see if they do do a big discount on shutters of change. Um, yeah, I mean, I like. I, I don't really like uh yeah like i've said a number of times i don't really care about any of the factions in shadows of change so i wouldn't like you know what i mean like i wouldn't really be that bothered by it you know like if you, if you own everything else except for shadows of change and you just want to get shadows of change and you're just waiting for a discount then yeah that makes sense but like you know if there's other dlcs that you haven't bought yet i just bought like i'd buy i'd buy warriors of chaos or um or chaos dwarfs before i buy shadows of change but that's just because I don't really care about those factions that much, you know, so it's just, yeah, I guess it's a, I guess it's a subjective thing. All right. So the main thing I'm worried about with this army is the, um, the poison and globe it is. So I'm thinking we can pretty easily, we can probably pretty easily remove that threat though, by just taking our dogs around the back, maybe even hide them in the woods or something. Um, I might also see if we can um, just push them off the hill. So they're kind of on this bit of a hill there. It's not too bad, but if we could just rotate them around and push them down the hill. Um, oh yeah, by the way, it did it worked as well. What I was trying to say before. So normally, when you kill the when the dwellers blow pop all the time and you kill them all the time, they um, it um, it activates the enemy army. But we managed, I guess we managed to route most of them off the edge of the map or whatever, so we didn't kill that many of them. So they um, they didn't activate. So now we can try and like rotate them around and push them off the high ground. So if we can if we can put them push them around so they end up down here in this low ground, that'd be pretty cool, I reckon. Although my uh, my whole setup of having my dogs hide in the woods here is a bit defunct then. <laughs> no worries, yeah, boy. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I um. Yeah, um. I guess I uh. Yeah, I guess I do. I do promote a lot of uh, a lot of time wasting. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I guess I just. I'm not willing to take responsibility for that that aspect of it. You know, I'll take responsibility for like telling you whether I think your game is good or not. But I'm not going to take responsibility for whether you have enough self-control to not play it in the appropriate times, you know. <laughs> but um, but uh, hopefully you're you're only joking and you're enjoying you're enjoying sinking the appropriate amount of time into it. I don't fail. Does anyone know how much high ground actually affects the battle? Uh, I. They did a blog about it. You could probably Google it, actually, Stephen McGuff. Um, what was the name of it? Uh, remember they did that blog fairly recently? Not fairly, you know, fairly recently, like in the last year or so. They did a series of blogs about game mechanics. Um, and yeah, one of them was about like high ground and stuff. Um, Warhammer 3 high ground. Feature focus, elevation. All right, here we go. We're going to have, there's a link anyway if you want to check it out. But um, yeah, maybe we'll have um, we'll have a chat about it after this battle. Just going to see if I can get this. Um... But yeah, but basically, high ground affects your damage of your ranged units. We don't have any ranged units, but they have quite a lot. They have quite a few. Um, and it, and if you get if you have the maximum amount of elevation difference, I think they get plus thirty percent damage or something like that. Um, so it's pretty significant. Um, and the other thing about it is that um, you, when you're trying to charge units, if you try and charge units uphill um, and you don't have um, that trait that, but the, yeah, anyway, if you try and use charge units uphill, you get like a speed debuff. And um, I think sometimes you, it even stops you from being able to charge. Um, I can't remember now, but, um, but, it, but, the, but yeah, slow charging is bad. Reduces like your impact damage and all that kind of stuff. Strider, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Strider's cool because you can charge up hills and you don't um, lose any speed or anything. Alright, so we managed to rotate around so we, that we're, we've got the high ground now. 
which is pretty groovy. Man, I feel like we're going to get attacked in a second. Actually, I think we want to attack them. Going here pretty soon, I reckon. Oh, these mortars aren't even down yet. We need like four units on them. Pretty hectic. There we go. Got him. We got him. Alright, we get these mortars to sh get shut down. Hopefully, they hopefully wreck our infantry. Burn heretics! Nah, that mostly missed, but that's alright. Don't go off, we're pretty good. I don't think we I don't know if we made it through. Some more magic in here. About that. knocking things off and then consolidating our troops onto whatever's left. That was pretty fun. It's always nice to just uh, smash inferior troops. Early game Skaven are really fun to fight against, I think. Late games, later game Skaven, when they've got all those uh, weapons teams and uh, artillery and everything, it's like, ugh, maybe not so much fun. But, um, but yeah, early game. Pretty satisfying. Oh, 
think I am not versed in the arcane! In God, did Gondor have the high ground when Westfield, Westfold fell? I'm not sure, not sure. Um, yeah, so... So yeah, so CA did a bit of a series about um, different mechanics a while ago. Um, and one of the ones they did was about elevation. I'll just quickly, see if we can quickly do a bit of a re revision on that. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, so units comprise of individual entities. So it's calculated on an entity per entity basis. So the elevation bonus is not for the whole unit. It's for the individual dudes in the unit. Um, uh, yeah, and the three things that it affects are projectiles, melee attacks, and locomotion. So with... Um, so yeah, so with high ground and low ground, you know, things that are shooting up get less damage, things shooting down get more damage. Um, caps at 30%. Uh, so a ranged unit firing down on a target from 40 meters or above is getting 30% extra damage. Um, and, uh, and a unit firing at a target that's 40 meters above them is getting 30% less damage. Um, so if you're, on, if you're on like a cliff shooting straight down, you'll be getting heaps of extra damage, basically. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so if you have, yeah, if you're in that situation where you have two range units, one low, one high, you're getting the plus while they're getting the minus at the same time. So you're essentially doing like double damage. Um, uh, blah, blah. Where's the melee part? Melee, right. Uh, works exactly like projectiles uh, in every way. Um, the maximum coefficient is achieved at one meter of difference. So the, um, so yeah, so for melee infantry, it's the same thing, except uh, that if you're um, above, like uh, on the high ground, you can get a maximum of plus 30%. If you're on the low ground, you can get a maximum of minus 30%. But instead of being 40 meters of elevation, it's one meter of elevation. So this, and it's in and it's calculated on the individual dude right so this guy here attacking that guy there is probably like half a meter higher than him or whatever so he's going to be getting like 15 percent extra damage um whereas maybe this guy who's attacking at longer range with his with his spear he maybe he's a meter higher than that guy so he might be getting 30 percent extra damage and they'll be in 30 percent less damage or whatever so yeah so i don't know according to this it does a quite it makes quite a big difference um uh, oh yeah and movement sorry it was to do with speed and acceleration uh gradients increase fatigue um and there's also a speed reduction Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the I don't know what the actual formula is, but basically, if you go downhill, you go faster. If you go uphill, you go slower. I guess is the gist of it. Um, but yeah, if anyone understands it better than that, then feel free to explain. Uh, yeah, we were talking about that before, Jesus. Yeah, they do have a bit of a weird... There's a weird bug with the way the AI sets up their um, armies. I'm pretty sure they're aware of it, though. Oh, no. No, don't worry about it, Steven. I didn't... I was not... Yeah, you're... No. Thanks for the super chat, buddy. No, I no, I appreciate it. It's like... I, I don't think that dist I don't think that detracted from the stream. Well, hopefully it didn't. <laughs> um, I think it was... It's been long enough since, the, since CA did that announcement that I think it's good to remind people about it. So, um... Yeah, so it's good. That's what I like. What I was trying to say before is like, I, I quite often, um, I think we'll occupy, I guess we could sack it and then occupy it. Um, yeah, no, I quite often appreciate it when people ask questions. Um, you know, 
especially questions that like would be useful for new players because a lot of times I, I just forget to explain stuff you know like um I just kind of assume that everyone here kind of knows everything about the game and I don't need to explain anything you know and so it's like yeah it's actually good sometimes when someone asks a question and I'm like oh yeah that's actually an interesting mechanic that's a good thing to talk about you know it gives me something to talk about so no cheers Uh, yeah, that's the main thing with the speed. The, sp the main thing with the speed is about charging cavalry and charging units. Yeah, if you're trying to charge up a hill, it kind of sucks. Whereas if you're trying to charge down a hill, it's actually nice, especially if you're a larger size category, because extra speed means you get more impact damage. But you only get impact damage if you're a larger size category. So infantry charging infantry don't get impact damage, so it's not that big of a, of a deal. Like like um, speed doesn't affect your charge bonus. Your charge bonus is just your charge bonus. So infantry charging is not as big of a deal. Um, but for cavalry, um, yeah, getting like really high speed charges can give you a lot of extra impact damage. The gods smile. I foresee destruction. I guess we give him some fire magic. Now they will see true power. Um, how likely do you reckon they are to be able to ambush us? I'm kind of. You have my promise. Yes. Come. I may be a feast of pain, but administer pleasure just as easily. All right, we'll sell, um, sell tribe slaughter to these guys, and we'll sell a pillar of skulls to these guys. It's even a fun to fight an early game because morale actually matters. Yeah, actually, that is that is a good reason why Skaven is so fun to fight because they yeah because they have heaps of trash infantry, so you get to do really satisfying high damage attacks and seeing you guys like just slaughtering them. Um, but also, yeah, it's good to see like cascading morale failure. You know, like when you roll up a flank and you like you know you route a couple of units and then you see other units route and everything. And yeah, it's like there's not that many factions that have like low enough morale when you're playing a legendary to actually see like morale working properly um what do you guys usually go for undivided usually with undivided i just go for the undivided authority just to make your army a bit cheaper i guess um i guess magical attacks and weapon strength is not bad as well we're gonna um we're gonna make megathe on an exalted uh champion of Nurgle pretty soon. Actually, I might do that right now. All right, my Gartheon. I, um, I, uh, I dubbed the champion of Nurgle. Virulent strength. Okay, what do we get? So his new trait is Evil Eyeball. So extra ambush ambush defense chance and campaign sight. It's not the best, but that's all right. Um, the Great, so extra weapon strength, etc. And he's got undivided authority plus one own army. Hmm, okay. Um, are you like magic attacks? Okay. Good to know, good to know. Um, he's only level three now, so he doesn't have... Uh, need that stuff anymore but you got to go back to the start in order to level up again so mortal champion training action unit experience gain is increased by an additional 25 percent 
That's actually not bad. That's actually not bad. Because what is it normally? 50%? 30, sorry, 30%. Um, like, that's huge, isn't it? Is if one, That can't be right. If that's like flat 25%, so instead of increasing by 30%, you increase by 40%, by 55%. What? Yeah, where is he? Um, training. 35%. Oh, so it's 25% base already. So he's already, so when he gets maxed out, he's already increasing experience by 55%. And then that's going to give it another 25%. So he's going to be increasing the experience gain in battles by 80%, right? Yeah, they changed it in the line 4.1. Um, so yeah, so if that's additive, then that's 80% exp extra experience for battles. Like you guys are leveling up like twice as fast. But it, it could be not added. It might be multiplicative. So it might be like normally you'd get like 55%. So that would give you like an extra 10% or whatever, like a quarter of 55. Um, yeah, here we go. Vigor loss reduction minus 50% for chosen units. So if we go for like a full chosen army for, Ar for Archeon, he can take this. So you have minus 50% um, Vigor loss for chosen. And then Archeon can take the minus 15% um, Vigor loss in his, um, in his skill tree from Hearts of Iron. And then we'll have minus 65%. Um, that'd be pretty good. Soul units and yeah, soul units and stuff. Got to, I, but I tend to my noble um, aspiring champions tend to be constantly fighting in battles like that. Intend to leave the armies very much. A storm of chaos mm. now. Right. So I think there's a like the tiny chance they might be able to ambush us, but I doubt. I doubt it. You dare. Actually, yeah, is the perfect vigor for chosen, or if is it for um, for aspiring champions? I mean, I think it definitely is for aspiring champions. I'm not sure if it's chosen as well, though. Maybe a quest has been issued, mighty lord. A great adventure beckons. Be wary, though, for while the potential rewards are great. Oh, undivided chosen. Okay, that's okay. That's cool. So, um, but yeah, so he, he could go with like noble chosen and give them um, the bigger reaction. Bring <clears throat> ruin. You dare. Yeah, crap. You can't. Syrians uh... are guns. I take it this turn, but it's all right. Oh, they've already... Ah, uh, no, oh well. I, t I screwed up. I didn't realize that the... Um, I didn't realize that... I didn't realize I'd run out of regions. I should have kept Tribe Slaughter as their, uh, their vassal spot. For chaos! Oh, no vessels, no Skaven vessels this time. That's all right. No. Plagues expedite sickness. My lord, Sinch agrees. Now they will see true power. I am pleased. Hmm. <clears throat> we go for more exalted heroes or more sorcerers? Mm, both, both good options. Uh... 
Let me go yourself to your race. Always rush for Bellicorp. Oh, yeah. I was thinking we go for maybe trying to go for Festus first. That way we can rampage down and actually fight Kislev and the Empire fairly early. Which I think would be kind of fun. But not not finish him off, though. Just rampage down there, grab Festus and Azazel, and then, like, GTFO again. And uh, get, yeah, get the hell out of there and go back to... Actually, I think I'm going to change the Magath Ian's name to Magath. Sorry, Magath Ian. Magar. That sounds pretty cool, too. Magarth. Right, and we will make him Lord. <clears throat> All right. Earliest Carl versus Akin would be good, yeah. <clears throat> so it'll be like a foreboding, like they'll come down, fight the Empire a bit, the Empire will be like, oh my god, and they'll sort of they'll sort of push back chaos, but then that'll be just this that's this just the beginning kind of deal. It's only the beginning. And death deal. I mean I sort of don't feel like they're gonna have an army in there, but it is corrupt. <clears throat> they might. Not yet, Phoenix. Nearly. But I will hear it from your lips. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. I don't really like the idea of doing in doing anything for anybody because I'm Archeon and I feel like just being a dick to everybody. But um I mean it would be nice if these guys would stay allied with us. Like, it would be good to have a non-aggression pact with them. Oh, they're... Oh, hey, they're already getting wiped out. Oh, fuck. Looks like we're going to have to turn around and fight Bellicor. I mean, turn around and fight Boris. Or should we just, like, let... Should we just let Boris destroy our fortress and not worry about it? <clears throat> It's not a matter of finishing Boris, it's a matter of starting Boris. Boris is, like, already expanding. He's taken out those that Cornate faction. That's why they're trying to do diplomacy with me, because they're getting smashed by Boris. I look forward <laughs> to it. Princess Sigvald must be saved. <clears throat> Ready. Oh, you know what? We should be doing some... Um, we could be doing some vassal mission, ally missions. Oh, we don't have any ally missions. Crap. Why don't they have any ally missions? Losers? <clears throat> To 
kill them all. No. <laughs> uh. So Karak Dum, Kar Dum is um, rank two at the moment. They're trying to level up to rank three. So as soon as we attack it, it's going to get knocked down to tier one anyway. So I'm just going to sack it. To keep uh, Arkan's movement rolling. Foolish, stupid. Are we um, are we getting banners or anything yet? <coughs> nope. <coughs> What's the um? What's the map? Oh, there's only one Skaven map, isn't? Oh no, but it's not necessarily. <clears throat> oh, uh, Phoenix King! Uh, Phoenix King just said, "Yeah, I just finished my Arcan campaign and I got all legendary lords. You need a bit of luck to get all eight of them." Um, well, yeah, you're you've done exactly what I'm trying to do right now. So, yeah, have you got any uh, got any tips? Oh yeah, I was. I, sorry, Jesus. I was thinking about checking it, but um, you lose the you lose their XP, like their extra XP. So if they had like just hit rank three, uh, rank four, sorry, um, then um, <clears throat> if they had just hit rank four, then I would have maybe done it. But um, but I, I don't really have the money anyway. And if they were um, if they were like nearly rank four, or nearly rank five, or whatever, then you don't want to waste the, that extra XP by switching them back and forth. Very well. So be it. Tears for honors. Nurgle's pestilent glory. They don't have any nukes before anyone asks if they got nukes. They do not. They do not have nukes. But um, but yeah, but yeah, the, it is a cool ability that the Warriors of Chaos have that you can just um, switch back between halberds, sh sword and shield, or um, or or um. Yeah, you have you have great weapons as well for yeah for Chaos Warriors. Yeah, great weapons, halberds, or sword and shield. And for like corn, you've got um, yeah halberds or dual wield or sword and shield. And, you know. So yeah, it's kind of cool. And you can just switch back. You just have to pay gold to convert them. All right. We've got four menace below, so I might as well just get rid of those. Otherwise, they'll probably kill my horse archers or whatever the most annoying thing is that they could attack. Uh, for um, Menace Billows.
the, uh, the one of the reasons that you do the blob like this is because the the when you have like your guys all stacked up like this they can't really fight properly which is kind of bad but it also means that when they if they kind of if they spawn inside here or whatever they can't really fight properly either like they're like all the units kind of like bump into each other i think and they don't really like their animations don't work properly and stuff like that um if they get especially if they get squeezed too tight um so yeah and so if you if you like have a lot of arches and stuff you can just like stack up all your arches on top of each other and then they it kind of makes it harder for the ai to um if the if the menace below is like spawn inside them or whatever they won't really do that much damage they'll just all kind of be stuck in there and whatever um <clears throat> And, um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, if you can kill their menace blows without them being able to kill any of your weaker units. Or, so, like, if I didn't, if I didn't do anything, if I just set my guys up normally, like, they'd probably drop their menace blows on, um, our Marauder Horsemen, um, which they, and they'd do a lot of damage to them. But, um, instead they did, you know, fuck all damage, a little bit of health damage to one of those spawns. But yeah, the lore of the blob, exactly. Um, and yeah, there's other things that blobs are good for as well. Um, <clears throat> skillful, <clears throat> skillful uh, tactical play is not is not one of the features of the blob. But um, but yeah, but sh there's various cheeses that blobs are good for. Um, but yeah, just I guess just be aware that they're not always good. Like blobs aren't very good at like offensive melee, you know, like they don't do much damage to the enemy. Um, I think they, yeah, I think they do less damage than they would if you had them properly spaced out and able to charge and that kind of stuff. Blobs are excellent for wind of death. Blobs are excellent for wind of death, both both at, both for attack, for, for giving and for receiving. Um, if you want to get your army absolutely violated, then um, then having a massive blob is a perfect way. You, and the enemy's got um, and the enemy's got AOE magic, and having a massive blob is a perfect way for the enemy to totally annihilate you in uh one easy step but um but also if you've got wind of death or you've got a really you know if you've got burning head or a really nice fire spell or whatever the ai will generally try to match you like i mean there's different there's different um i guess sometimes competing objectives that the ai is trying to do with their battle ai but one of the things that they'll try to do is if you have a lot of units in a certain spot They'll try to, they, then any units they have that are nearby will take a morale penalty, penalty. It'll say faster and stronger units nearby. Like if they have one unit of infantry and you have like three units of infantry, like all together on that on their one unit of infantry, then they'll be at a, they will get a morale penalty. So like to counter that, the AI will often try to match it. So if you have if you have they have one unit, and you have three units, they'll send two other units over there to go three v three so that they don't get like um, they don't get the morale penalty. So so the so the way you can exploit that is by making a massive blob, which means that they'll make a massive blob to try to stop. You know, like if they tried to attack this with like three units that would match our frontage. They'd get they'd get faster and stronger penalty against them because I've got like twenty seven units in the three in that three unit frontage. So yeah, so you can use your blob to like make them blob, but but they've now got sort of anti blob technology <laughs> where the AI will try to avoid blobbing um, as much. But it still works the same way. But there's like I don't know I think there's just something counteracting it a little bit. So like it's like I feel like it's. I mean, I don't know really, but I feel like it's like they still have that same trigger. Like they're still like the AI is still saying, "Oh, there's heaps of units here. I need to blob," but then there's something else saying, "Don't blob. Keep you guys, keep you guys spread out." You know, it's so. But it's still like it's still there though. I feel like that's still it still has that same programming. That was a lot of blob. And that was a lot of burning head damage. How do we do? Archeon just did. 28,000 damage from one burning head. Pretty good. Not bad at all. We might get this done with just Arcan, and not even need our troops. That was a lot of damage, but yes. But this is an example of exactly what I was talking about. Because I've got one, two, three, four, I've got four lords here, right? And these guys are all worth a lot of gold value. So the AI is trying to stack a lot of gold value on top of them to stop them from getting faster and stronger. Um, but, um, but yeah, if you look here, yeah, no, they're not getting, see there's no faster and stronger on them right now. They've got enough units here to kind of like overcome it.
Yeah, Burning Head versus Skaven is is a beautiful thing. Hey, Viri. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't watch my videos, yeah. I'm a bit disappointed that I screwed up my, uh, my vassalage now. Could have had some Skaven. Yeah, unfortunate thing about Chaos Warriors as well is that you can't really do any... That you can't really use the um, real estate shenanigans because as soon as you take over a settlement, it loses all of its like good buildings and stuff. Unless it's a Dark Fortress, but you're not really going to trade a Dark Fortress for anything. Still haven't lost much damage here, and we're kind of wrecking them. We've still got a fair bit of stuff left to come, though. <clears throat> yeah, maybe it was better just to get rid of them. Less, um, less hassles. Wins you got left. Uh, 30 wins magic. Right, yeah, we could do three more, um, three more burning heads if we save our wins of magic. Let's do it. You could always vassalize, vassalize Hell Pit. Um, yeah, Hell Pit's not a um, Dark Fortress, is it? Yeah, actually, if we could get Hess Hell Pit, that'd be really good. Uh, or, yeah, no, we'd, uh, actually, no, Skaven don't make much money, I don't think. Yeah, Skaven don't make much money, so I don't know if they're very good vessels, really. Who makes good money that's good vessels? Um, I think Demon for Slanesh is probably a good one. Well, that was a good burning hit. Kind of bounced around everywhere. Thinking about bringing in some the troops now, but. Where's that Lord? Uh, oh, he ran away. That's fine. That didn't really work too much. I bet this is going to bounce over here and kill our dogs. With his law. Yeah, this one unit of, uh, this one unit of spears just completely shut down our dogs going through the door. The gate. Alright, I might just push him through. 
<laughs> yeah, see, good thing I don't have no ladders is they don't try to go up the ladders. Just put the rest. Yeah, no more magic. Six hundred and sixty-six. Uh, I don't know. I think it'll be another uh, be a few years before I start seeing those kind of numbers, if if ever. But that would be good. that would be pretty cool. Alright, we've got the terror out in there. It's good. Alright, we're in. There's some terror routing and stuff going on here. Terror in here would be good. Just yeah, right keep this all, keep this route going. Some dogs up there as well. A little extra speed. some progress. Yeah, that's pretty much all down. Just going to wrap that one. The dark gods command me. Conquest. Must be nearly there. Some spears in the middle here. Exalted hero of Nurgle. Rip out guts. Pain and despair. Slay them. Just trying to keep these um, rural horsemen in there so they can sort of plink into the uh, melee just to add a little bit of melee, a uh, bit of leadership debuff. So these guys have got 17 leadership at the moment. And if you look at the, the red, I've just tried to target them in my ranged. Um, there we go. 
Um, da, da. It should be... It should be taking missile fire, but I think we're having trouble targeting them. Nah, we got one of it anyway. But, um... Yeah, I was trying to get... Um, yeah, see this faster and stronger? Enemies nearby? That's because we're kind of outnumbering them here, or outpowering them here, at least. But you can actually get a penalty from shooting them as well, but... Yeah, I was having trouble targeting. Ah, uh, they're already... There we go. Alright. We've conquered them. Conquered the rat men. So they've still got a random army floating around. I guess we could vassalize them, but they're, uh, they don't have any settlements, so we can't. Oh yeah, hey Nacht, so what was the problem with your vassals not liking each other? I mean, they don't, they can't really betray you or do anything about it, can they? They just, they just can just like quietly hate each other and you just don't care, right? to make any more deals with you oh like um joining wars and stuff chaos. all right we're a little bit under the pump in terms of ash Possibly some trade. Slybull Fury. Uh, we oh we don't really want to make any relations with these guys because they're gonna um we're gonna get a war in a second anyway. Take that deal with them. I think that's yes. possibly a bad idea because it's going to make Boris declare war on us faster. But uh, yeah. Um, also, with the disciples of Hashut, yeah, I guess we want to vassalize them. Hmm. Should we be allies with the Chaos Dwarves or the vassals? I feel like vessels is more reliable. It's really going to be hard to maintain an alliance, whereas if we get a vessel, then we know that it's reliable for the rest of the campaign after that. Got a Chaos Commander on uh, Lord Magarth. Magarth. I feel like this guy's Khan Death Dealer. It's a real Chaos. It's a real Corn Champion name, but he's like a Z. He's going to be a Zeech Fire Lord. So it's kind of, kind of weird. But... Now they will we'll give him a name at some point. Power. This is Von Chesson, Lord of Carrick Dumb. Yes, yes. Yeah, so we need uh, 3,000. 3,000 favor to ascend Von Chesson. No, you fail, failed. I have this world. Hmm. Hey Hayden. Uh, I don't know. I, I, at one stage there, I thought I probably would do some old world, but um, yeah, I don't know. As time goes on, I'm kind of thinking it's less and less likely because there's just that's a, that's my thing with mods. It's like I'll I'll probably play a lot more mods once the games finish and there's no more um, there's no more expansions going to be due. There's no more patches, you know. Um, 
and you know and i've kind of feel like you've done everything already or, or whatever or there's like bugs that will never get fixed or you know that kind of stuff but it's like yeah i feel like there's always like i've always got too many i've always got like heaps of factions and campaigns and stuff that i want to play so i kind of just never get around to doing any mods you know yeah i i uh, i don't know yeah no i'm not sure sorry maybe but it's sort of seeming less and less likely now. But um, but hey, look, there's um a ton of other good YouTubers have covered it already. Um, so if you're looking for um some some old world streams, um yeah, I think like there was a yeah I be uh, like yeah pretty much everyone's been playing old world like for the last few weeks, I think except me, <laughs> I guess. Um. So, if it, if I understand correctly, so we've got the Goromani tribe here. They've got five regions, right? They own, um, yeah, this one, this one, you know, blah, blah. So, we could attack Fort Daroslav next and then whatever, and then work our way up to Karak Vlag. And then once we take Karak Vlag, I believe they just, they just become automatically vassalized. But we could also just skip fighting anything else, just go straight to Karak Vlag and take that. And then we, you know, don't have to fight as many battles, I guess. How much cash we got? We're still kind of... Like, hmm. Alright, I might... We're going to lose some experience on those dogs, but that's alright. Um... We could, um... How much these guys? 102. You will lose some dogs. Uh, these Marauder Horsemen, I kind of want to keep the Marauder Horsemen. I don't really want the Hellstriders. Does anyone like the Hellstriders? Like, does anyone think I should not disband them? I feel like we don't really need them. solo this guy with Arkham. But well, Chiston sounds like an Empire Lord who gave himself to Chaos. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking about when I named him. Yeah, um, you've been, you've been playing um, Old World a, a bit, Hayden? I was kind of, yeah, I was kind of thinking about, because um, if I was going to play Old World, I think I'd want to play Empire. But I just played Empire recently, you know. But I was thinking, if I do play Old World, I was thinking Vampires. Um, it'd be kind of cool to just, yeah, play, play vampires in the old world mode. Right, this guy's just here to wait, wait for his Lord Archeon. Archeon's going to come and, uh, slay this boiler in single combat to assert his dominance. It's kind of just unnecessary bit of uh, unnecessary side quest we're going on here, but you know. So for those of you who said we should go east first and take Kolek Village, what's the why? What was the like? Why are people voting for that? Is it because you think Village? Do you think Village or Kolek is going to die and we should get them quickly before they die, or is it just because you really like Kolek and Village and you want me to get them first, or? Easily defendable. Oh, okay, like, yeah.
Yeah, um, we, yeah we should get, actually, maybe we should go for another Lord as well. Go for Lord style just so we can start um, farming up more magic items. Yon's dueling him. Magic and and combat. Smish. Oh, he's summoning chaos powers. Is the knockback on him? This um Skaven isn't really doing very well. Yep, did an attack, but it failed. Plank. <laughs> All right, I think I can win that round. Pretty decisive. Helic is a beast, also to support our cannon. Yeah, um, he's pretty close by as well, I guess, sort of. Like if we were gonna if we're gonna conquer Alright, how about if we go Tread on his tail, yeah. How about if we go Festus? Because I'm just I'm worried Festus is gonna die. So how about we rush we rush rush down and try and get Festus? And then Hmm. I mean, maybe we rush Festus, then we get a second we start a second army. We get a second army to go after All right, maybe we rush Festus, then Azazel. Festus, Azazel, then Astrogoth, then Kolek. Festus lasts for a while, usually. Yeah. Yes, I don't, um, yeah, I don't know. 348 souls from this one guy. It's pretty good. Guess he must be high level. Alright, let's take um take some of the more damaged units out. Force March Archeon. Not sure if that's actually gonna help him much, but Oh this is we're getting Oh we're still getting replenishment in here anyway, so that was a bit of a waste of time. <clears throat> yeah, so once we get the once that building finishes and uh especially once this building finishes we'll be doing pretty well in terms of money. Let's send the hero down, yeah. I, I don't really wanna waste my heroes on like not you know, I wanna use what them in that? combat. Yes. If possible. So yeah, I mean, it was pretty much guaranteed that Boris was going to declare war on us early, but, um... Hmm... Hmm... Yeah, we kind of have to go back and fight Boris now, otherwise he's going to chew up all our vassals. Unless we just... Don't worry about it and just let him kill our vassals. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that's the thing. It's like the way I would normally play it, I guess, is that, yeah, I would um, go, I would normally go Slanesh first, then Boris, 
then come back and get Skaven. Um, but I was sort of thinking this campaign, I wanted to sort of rush the other Lords more. Um, I, I didn't really think about the fact that that would require us to sacrifice our territory. Um, so like, I think like the sort of like correct way to do it would be to start, start as Archeon starting position here, go down here, vassalize um, the, the exquisite pain of Slanesh, then immediately from there go over, vassalize Boris, which I think is what we did last time, and then um, then probably come back. Oh, I don't know, actually. Yeah, then maybe come back. Oh, I mean, you could leave this probably, or you could... Yeah, I don't know, there's lots of options, I guess, after that. But, but yeah, you should probably take out Boris first, I guess. Um, I'm just trying to think whether I should worry about Boris or not. It could be kind of fun just to leave these guys here and let them try to <laughs> try to deal with Boris. It's all looking pretty good. So yeah, so what we could do just to mix it up a bit this time is just not worry about defending and just keep attacking and uh, just let Boris do his thing and just come back and conquer it back again later or whatever. We're going to lose a few vassals, but it is what it is. Because yeah, in terms of like the overall meta campaign, it would be definitely good to get rid of Boris. But in terms of our objective of confederating all the other lords, it doesn't really, it, you know, taking him out doesn't really advance our cause at all. But especially at this point, because we're going the other way. That's kind of cool. But it sort of leads down this other path that we don't really need to go down. Oh, actually, I guess it makes trolls good. Hmm. Actually, getting, yeah, getting Gore Feast for Chaos Warhounds and um, plus eight melee attack for Chaos Warhounds is pretty nice. The storm of chaos gathers. The Eye of Syrian has already told me your offer, but I will hear it from your lips all the same. Hmm. 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 Thoughts. Yeah, the, um, yeah, not being able to sell, um, not being able to region trade for, like, infinite cash and reputation actually is a pretty big, um, is a pretty big penalty for Chaos Warriors. Kind of just gotten used to being able to totally cheese the game with the region trading and now, yeah, not being able to do it in this campaign is like, oh, the shock to the system. The gods might compel me to kill, but I do it freely. Where does the Eye of Shurian say to go? I don't know. I'm not sure. No. Oh, we haven't unlocked it yet. I haven't unlocked the Eye of Shurian quest yet. Uh, level 17, we have to get yeah, before we can find out. Slaughter! Or now? 
Now they will see true power. I'll have this world. Are you a god? I will hear you. Let's find... Spirit of Mortal. Impossible! Bit Jesus in there as well. So we can get a bit of experience. Uh, oh, aspiring champions. So yeah, so I think in this campaign, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to recruit aspiring champions from you know in the in the early game anyway. I'm not going to recruit aspiring champions. Um, I'm just going to like try and level them up from my Chaos Warriors order. But then um, maybe later on in the game, after the end game spawns, then I'll like remove that restriction. But for the kind of early game, I'm, I'm not going to recruit any instant aspiring champions. I'm just going to try to like level them up from like Warriors of Chaos and stuff. Upgrade these guys to armored armored chaos trolls, which is pretty cool. Let us corrupt. Destroy. Does I see low? Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty easy map, so I might just fight the battle just to make sure we don't take any good damage. Um, yeah, the upgrade mechanic's really nice for Chaos Warriors, for sure. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a left side guy on this uh, dwarf campaign. I love this little alleyway down here. You can just kind of like feed all the enemies into here. They can't, they kind of, all their ranged and artillery and towers are blocked by these buildings pretty much. So it's kind of just, yeah, seems to work pretty well. I just, I don't know, I haven't really tried a different method of attacking this ever since I kind of came across this method of attacking on the left side. I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's any other way of attacking this. I've just never really tried any other way. Yeah, the scrap mechanic and the upgrade mechanic are both really cool. Um, yeah, I think they're really good. Um, also, stuff like the... I really like the slave mechanics that the Dark Elves and the Chaos Dwarfs get. Just gives you something else, some other like bit of economy stuff to work on in between your um, your turns and stuff. <clears throat> I think, yeah, but basically like, any other mechanics that you've got that um, apart from just conquering stuff, um, but that actually feel like they're useful, that actually, you know, does something, um, is good. Like, I think, I think they can give you, you can have, like, bad examples of that maybe where it's, like, it feels just, like, busy work that you have to do, like a chore, and it doesn't, doesn't feel, like, very valuable, like, or, I, yeah, either it doesn't feel meaningful and valuable, or it feels like it's just something you have to do all the time, and it's sort of annoying. That's kind of, like, what you don't want. But I think, um, but yeah, I think the Chaos Dwarf and uh, the Dark Elf Slave mechanic is, you know, pretty, they're pretty, it's pretty easy. It's not very onerous to deal with. And, um, and you get a good, really good um, advantage in game. Like if you, if you're like sacrificing slaves every turn, um, there's just like a little mini game of moving your labor around between different provinces to make sure you've got enough to sacrifice and also to, um, yeah, I'm just going to push through the door because Sometimes going over the wall. I mean, sometimes going over the walls is all right, but sometimes going over the walls is just a pain in the butt. Um, and we're not under any time pressure right now. These towers aren't activated, so I'm just going to sit here. Um, 
but yeah and i think like the yeah the upgrade mechanics is another one of those things where you just kind of like you know paying attention to how much experience you guys are getting and whether you want to change them into oh, and then i said that and now they take over the towers bastards This tower's gonna start blinking at us now. See, they do like very little damage though. Shoot, 125 damage. Mm, I guess it's starting to add up. They oh, you heard me, yeah, no, they oh, heard me. They're onto me now. Bastards. Um, yeah, I could have just set up over here and they would be able to shoot us, so. All right, let's get these doors down. Yeah, the final hex that you get for um, a stank, yeah, it's, yeah, that's probably not, yeah, I mean, I, so, like, yeah, there's a few things with that, like, so one of the things with that is that it's an end game, it's an, like, a literal end of the game kind of thing, um, but it's also, like, happens really late in the game, so, and it's not very, you know, so it's pretty, like, yeah, I think, like, yeah, the thing with the Mother of Stankia Final Hex, like, it's, like, it's just sort of, I don't know, it's just, like, oh, a really powerful one destroy faction thing, you know? So it's, like, it's cool, but it's cool in a very, like, it's cool, but in a very, like, stupid basic, my dad's tougher than your dad kind of a way, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah i just think like anything like that that's just like uh oh, i've got a super powerful you know game ender that i can use on you that's the most about like i don't know like you can there's only so many times you can use that whole concept of like i've got the most powerful weapon in the entire world and you know and and like oh now another faction i've also got the most powerful weapon in the entire world you know like yeah, I think that that whole, like, I've got the most powerful weapon in the entire world thing is just a bit like, meh, you know? Um, so yeah, my, my favorite, my favorite Mother is Thank You thing is her level three, um, level three hex, the one that lets you teleport your, um, your armies every few turns. Um, so that's like just super fun. Um... Yeah, the, yeah, the teleport one's definitely the best one, I reckon. No. It's kind of the same with Snickitch's thing as well. It's just like, I don't know. It's like, it's... Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's not, it's not really that much fun, I reckon. Like, stank, like Thanos snapping factions and stuff. It's just, I don't know. It's just, there's nothing fun about it to me. Like... The whole fun, the whole idea of playing a strategy game and, and being fun is like doing strategies, you know what I mean? Like just having some super powerful mechanic that deletes factions is like just not really, you know, not really what I'm about. But, um, but it's the type of thing that gets a lot of airplay. Um, it's a good marketing sort of a thing, you know what I mean? Like, it's the sort of thing people will talk about a lot. Um, well, not me, because I think it's pretty boring, but yeah, like, <laughs> I guess I'm talking about it a lot now. But yeah, I think those like Thanos snap abilities are the sort of things that people will talk about a lot and people will potentially make a video about or whatever, but they don't really... It's like, it's, fr it's front-loaded sort of thing, you know? It's like when, when the DLC first comes out, and um everybody nobody knows anything about the factions or whatever then like that's the sort of thing that'll be like a headline grabber like oh my god have you seen that this faction's got can totally just win the game with one ability or to, you know like that's the sort of thing that people will make one video about and you'll find out that they've got that ability and you'll be like oh my god that's amazing but that's it like there's no more content to be made with with that you know and and it's from from my point of view as a youtuber but also as a player 
like yeah once you've like killed the faction once you've Thanos snapped the faction you'll be like alright you know like it's the there's nothing like interest like you know what I mean it's not like you know it's not like you're like oh I want to start a whole new faction so I can get up to the Thanos snap and Thanos snap a slightly different faction with it like you know what I mean there's nothing it's not very fun really like yeah anyway I think we've covered it now Remember the mechanic that turned Tretch into the Malice Demon? What? What are you, what are you talking about, Steven? I think I must have missed that one. You mean Malice, the god, the Chaos God of Destruction? Let's take it to the Tretch. Isn't Tretch is Tretch is escaping? Isn't he? Confused. Um, I haven't really been paying too much attention to this battle. I think I'm getting all my all my large units. See how much knights are getting fucked. Let's see if we can bounce our pool ball through there. like a story thing from the Vortex campaign. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I guess with the Vortex campaign, I kind of don't mind as much because I feel like the Vortex campaign is more like a one-shot sort of a thing anyway. You know, like you just do it once for the storyline. So it's kind of okay if like it, the story ends with you, you know, Thanos snapping a faction or turning into a giant demon or whatever. But yeah, if it's like... Yeah, I'm... It's like, uh, it's not, I'm, maybe I'm like overstating it. It's not like I hate it or like it's, it ruins the game or anything. It just, it just doesn't, it doesn't add very much value, I reckon, you know? That's all I'm trying to say. Like, I feel like Mother of Stanky's, um tier three hex, the one that gives you the teleport, is like super fun and super cool. And you can, you can do all kinds of weird, cool stuff with it. You can teleport your armies to totally new regions. You can teleport enemy armies into other regions. Um, you know what I mean? Like, you can do, you can do really cool stuff with it. Um, whereas, yeah, like, I think, like, yeah, the Thanos snapping mechanics, like, they just don't do anything cool. Like, it just defeats the faction. Um, and it defeats the faction that you are, would otherwise have to play the game to defeat the faction. So, it's like, do you know what I mean? It's almost like anti-fun. It's like, if you didn't want to play the game, then just don't play the game. You know, like a faction that may avoids you having to play the game is not really, yeah, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, like, so anyway, long story short, I, I don't, I don't like hate those faction, those mechanics, but I just think they offer, I think those Thanos snap, snap, snap type uh, things like Snickers one and also Mother of Stankier's end game plague, like they just, yeah, they just don't offer that much value. They're not, they're not very enjoyable compared to other cooler mechanics. But they're no, no, they're no, you know, no problem. Um, I guess on the positive side, you could think of them as a way to avoid endgame fatigue. Um, you know, maybe you still want to keep going, you're trying to conquer the world or whatever, but you've got a particular faction that's really breaking your balls and making you want to kill yourself. And then you can just, you know, use that to delete them so you don't have to worry about it anymore. That's pretty cool. I guess there's often a faction like that, but yeah, I think you just got to be careful of like, if you delete your like main nemesis in the game, then you know you might delete all the fun of the game as well. All right, so we got we really got to decide now. Am I going to go for Festus or are we going to go? Maybe we should get rid of this. I'll get rid of this pole and do another one. All right, what do you guys what do you guys want to see? Should we be sensible? Crossroads. Sensible? Okay. 
So we've got, we can go sensible option, which is the safety option, just to, to go back and eliminate Boris right now. We could go, um, continue to Festus, unstoppable. Um, is there any other options? Pretty much go after Festus or go after or go back after Boris. Or I guess or we could go after Kolek or something. Well I guess I'll just put other. So if Bestus is, Bestus is here, not too far away, um, we could go after Kolek, but if I was going to go after Kolek, the Kolek's probably around here somewhere, if I was going to go after Kolek, I would probably want to like completely wipe out um, the Chaos Dwarfs first, and then um, vassalize them. That would be really good financially as well, because the Chaos Dwarves, I think, make a pretty good amount of money. Um, so we could potentially get them set up, maybe feeding us a fair bit of cash with their vessel. Um, Kolek. Kolek is... No. Is going to tell me the region? The Challenging Stone. Yeah, Kolek's there. Pretty sure the Challenging Stone is his region. And, but yeah, and Festus is kind of like there. So I feel like Festus is like a bit more, I mean, I'm oh, sorry, Festus is down here. Um, but yeah, Festus is like kind of like that far away, but we can pretty much just go straight through here and then, um, and then take out Festus and Festus probably won't have that much land. So it'll probably be pretty easy, you know, whereas if we go after Kolek, I'm probably going to, come through here, I'm going to conquer all of this land um, to get rid of all of Astrogoth, maybe even down to here a little bit, and then give it all back to him once I vassalize him, and then we'll go after the Colex. So it's kind of like, kind of a bit probably longer, whereas if we come down this way, it's going to be more direct, just go straight to Tempestus and take him out. Um, Castel and Lit, oh yeah, I was just, Pointing at the vague area, I wasn't like specifically pointing out the particular region. I know when I play as M when I play as Carl Franz, I usually get here by about turn fifteen, and Vestas has usually got about three regions here. But yeah, I mean, we probably won't get there till turn twenty, so he might have more stuff by then. Um, you know, or we could just go back we could just be sensible and go back and kill boris because if we don't go back and kill boris he's gonna eventually he's gonna kill all of our vassals and probably take our settlement and you know all that good stuff which is annoying but it is what it is all right, we've got 16 votes, and most people are saying that we should just don't worry about Boris and go after Festus. All right, that's pretty much what I wanted. That's what I wanted to do as well. But yes, I am recognizing that this is probably not the meta thing to do. Um, need a boon to have my promise. It's probably not the meta thing to do. Um, we probably would be better off in the long term going back and dealing with Festus. I mean Boris. Or we would have been better off as just taking out Boris in the first place. But, um... We shall weave the fates. Ready. You dare. All right, we get another Lord in here as well. We're going to find Um, can we... Oh, you want. The evil sons... Are gonna get wiped out by Kolo. So we'll take some money from them before they die. Bone rattlers, as eggs mob. Is 
Oswald and Carl. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Bellacor, I mean, Bellacor's portals are really cool. Um, and they give you a whole different aspect on the game and all that kind of stuff. But, um, but yeah, I just like, uh, I just like Archeon better. I like Archeon campaigns better. I think it's just because of his start position. Like I kind of like the way that Archeon starts up the top and you kind of like take over all your lands and you have all your vassals surrounding you. And it just feels like, you know, yeah, I did. I vassalized Boris. So last time I played Archeon, um, I kind of did a bit more like what you should do, which is I took out Slanesh first vassalized them, then took out Boris, vassalized him, then took out the Skaven. I don't think I vassalized, I'm not sure if I vassalized the Skaven or not. I think I, actually, I think I did vassalize the Skaven last time as well. Um, and yeah, but, um. Maggot Kin. Yeah, I don't really want them to declare war on me, so I'll take the 30 gold. Yeah. It's not about Arcane's, uh, it's not really, for me, it's not about Arcane's campaign being smoother necessarily, although that is a factor as well. It's just about like the, I don't know, there's something about like having territory and, bo and meaningful borders and stuff like that. You know, whereas I feel like Bellicor is a bit more just like an all over the place. Um, and also because he's got an island, he starts off on an island and it just feels a bit weirder with the way his territory expands. Whereas I feel like with Archeon, with Archeon, you know, expanding his territory, you get a bit more of a kind of empire of vassals feeling. But um, but yeah, also it's probably easier as well. <laughs> yes. You dare! The gods smiled. Syrians are gods. For chaos. Right. So, do we want to get some more magic, maybe? Get some red line happening. So, yeah, we're just putting heads. A storm of chaos gathers. Yeah, Bellicor's portals are really cool, but I just, just, I don't really like Bellicor. Like, like Archeon is just the, just the ultimate Chad, you know? Whereas Bellicor is just a bit more of like a, I don't know, weird emo demon. Just doesn't have the same charisma. He's, he's all right. Like, he's not as bad as like Azazel or something. But he's, um, I mean, like, yeah, like Bellicor's not, He's not shit. Like he's cool. Like he's he's strong and he's badass and everything. But he's just not as cool and badass as Archeon, basically. The gist of it. Oh, I hadn't really thought about this. We're gonna have a lot of uh just wandering through lands without attacking anything. Kind of feeling. Where's um Where's the Where's the Bessonling's um, fortress? Hey, Vludra. Yeah, where's the Bessonling fortress? Is it... Oh, is it Prague? Oh, yeah, it's Prague, isn't it? Let's just get it, get it done. Now they will see true power. 
There will be a reckoning. Cease! Yeah, no, I think I think the portals are cool. Are definitely cool. Like I think Bellicor's faction mechanics are definitely better than Archeon's in my mind. Like in terms of coolness, um, but Archeon's just I don't know. It's, it's sort of like for me, yeah, it's just a me thing as well. Just like it's like how I like Malekith. Like Malekith's probably my favorite Dark Elf Lord, um, and it's like I don't know. There's other factions that have better mechanics and stuff, but you know, none of them are Malekith. Basically, Malekith's just he's just my. Uh, is my Dark Elf, Dark Elf Darth Vader. Two thousand, it's expensive. <clears throat> See, yes. you think that she should be able to take him out, but I reckon she'll get wrecked. I reckon both. I reckon next turn, both his army and her army will both be destroyed, and then we'll have double stacks of Bellicor, uh, Bell, um, Boris right now on her doorstep. That's all right. That's all right by me. Campaign's going all right. Well. The objective of the campaign is to confederate all, as many of the Chaos Warrior Lords as we can. So, it's going okay. We're heading towards Festus pretty much as fast as we can. So, hopefully that's going to work out well for us. But, um, in terms of our... Building our mighty empire... I foresee destruction. Um, it may not be that great. to destruction. Spirits of Morka. Foul move. What? I'll have this world. I will guard you. Insulted me. So no, you insulted no alliances, Israel. but they're uh, they're trading with Georgina. Uh, hey Peter, you've got to def you've got to um, take their last settlement. Do you have to um, also wipe out? Do you have to have their wipe armies wiped out as well? Yeah, I think so. Oh no, he's Vasily. Gotta go and sleep. Tomorrow we're taxing. Oh no, worries, but he have a good sleep. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna wrap this one up uh, fairly soon and maybe play a bit of Chaos Gate to finish off the night, but um. I want to progress a little bit more towards Festus first. Yeah, you too, buddy. Thanks for hanging out. Um, all right. Dominance ready for chaos. Now they will see true power. We shall weave the fates. All right, we're gonna. I'll um. We'll do a bit of a cheese here. We'll respect Khan. And replace him with shadows. No, no, it was right shadows. That's interesting. I mean, it's not interesting at all. It's stupid. Um, <laughs> um, brass collar of corn. Oh. Yeah, sure, why not? Are you a god? You have my favor. Improper for them. 
Pyrrhic victory. It's pretty rough. Actually, oh, actually, how many settlements do they have? They got two settlements. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, so we can take their other settlement, we can vassalize them, and then they'll actually be able to probably give us decent money from that. How many settlements do these guys have? They only have one. So we can vassalize them as well. Wow, maybe we should have gone for them first. Uh, Technology-wise, I did ever decide what I was going for. Um, I think like money. I think going after the money is probably the way to go. Fifteen turns is a long time, but chaos gate. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Law-wise, are any of the playable lords close to being a deity? Uh, uh, well, I mean, Bellicor is a um, Bellicor is a demon prince. That's you know, I mean, demon. I mean, demons aren't really gods, but they're. I mean, Colex. I feel like Colex kind of like a mount, like a god, but not really. Pyrrhic victory medium. Kind of would like to auto resolve this battle, but I probably should not. Dad jokes have come out. Oh. All right, let's do it. Um, controls hide? Oh, actually, no, nothing can hide because we have to come on as reinforcements. That's all right. Hey, Ants, how you going, buddy? I wonder what Archeon thinks of Gork and Mork. I don't think that Archeon spends a lot of time thinking about Gork and Mork, really. I, I can't imagine him contemplating the nature of Gork and Mork too much. Oh, these guys can hide. Oh, that's right. I thought they were going to be like, we don't hide. Kind of vibe. Right, we'll see if we can get this door open. Yeah, I'm just going to let everybody just do the thing. Let them come on wherever they're going to come on. Is this update live? Hey, Vimo. Yeah, yeah, I'm playing the live update. It's just the current, it's the current version. It's just, I just, I don't know. So lately, I've, I don't know. I've just got the idea lately to uh, put the version number on my stream so that when people, like, if, if somebody watches this stream, like, in the far future, in, like, you know, in the year 3000, then they'll know that it's not the current version. It's the, whatever, it's whatever the version was, you know. At this time. They're gonna go. They're gonna go up on the walls. All right. Um, guess we can hide them. In, we can hide them in the forest there for a while. Yeah, we we'll just hide all of our cavalry in the forest. An irresistible sensation. Find a victim. Meanwhile, these guys. <laughs> the beard back yeah yeah 
I shave it off occasionally when I get the idea to like roleplay as Voltmar or something. Uh, I think that was the last beard shave was when I was doing Voltmar roleplay. But yeah, I'm pretty. I'm a pretty hirsute gentleman, so yeah, it grows back pretty fast. I feel like I feel like I can go from like completely completely clean shaven to having a beard again in about four weeks. It won't be a very magnificent beard, but you know, I, I can achieve minimum beardness in about four weeks, I reckon. But yeah, that period when you first, the period from when you shave until you have achieved beardness is like pretty bad. You just look like a scraggly, scraggly hobo with like whiskers, you know. I'm 20 and I wish I could grow a beard that fast. Ah, oh, you know. Enjoy enjoy the enjoy the things about being 20. I guess there's gotta be some payoffs, isn't there? When you when you get to like middle age, you lose the ability to be, you know, young a young boyish Adonis. But you gain the ability to be a um be a uh, swarthy old goat. You, you lose the ability, yeah, you lose the ability to go um, Alexander the Great style, but you gain the ability to go full Ned Stark style, you know? Hey, Nevin. What? Oh, there's spears. There's spears. There are axes there. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, the dogs can go spears. We need the dogs and the spears. That's good. Also, at age 66, you get a free bus pass. pass. Nice. Chaos Warriors. There have been a lot of um, Gondor references today. What's going on? Is there like. There's like a uh, lot of the rings just going on Netflix or something. Everybody seems to be really uh, Gondor y today. But I mean, it's like the second Gondor comment we've had today. I guess it's only, I guess it's only two. Doesn't really make a, doesn't really make a, uh, a theme, but. Gondoria, <laughs> hey Super Tramp. It's a 20 year anniversary for Return of the King. Oh, really? I did not know that. That's pretty solid. The dogs took a bit of a hit, but that's what it is. Oh yeah, what's going on over here? These guys are getting blocked on my... Uh, she's, that's not too bad. Not too bad. They're taking hits, but they're warriors, you know, that's their job. They're, uh, they're here to fight. Tried to stop that charge just before they went in, but it's not to be. Dare 
Yeah, they got routed, but that's okay. Um, these two lords are probably going to get wrecked by this um, Isabite lord. Smashing them up. We just push through them. They they're going to rout as soon as they're in. Um, they got unbreakable for 30 seconds, but as soon as that wears off, they'll pretty much rout, I would guess. Arcan has a lot of the Witch King vibe from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's true. In Ireland, you get a free copy of Warhammer 3 at 65. That'd be pretty good. I feel like it'd be, you know, for, well, I mean, I mean, I think our generation, probably everybody will be pretty much playing Warhammer or something when they're 65. Um, but, um, but yeah, I feel like it'd be cool for like the like older generation, you know, like, I suppose they're probably all dead now, aren't they? But I suppose the people who are like currently 80 and stuff, I don't know, actually I don't know where I'm going with that. I guess I was just imagining some fantasy about like some old guy who never played computer games much when they were a kid or ever, you know, never really experienced computer games. And then, um, and then, you know, they're retired and so they don't have to do anything else. And then they get into, um, they get into Total War and it's like, this is awesome. I love playing computer games. I don't know. <laughs> That seems like a happy. That seems like a happy story to me. Could you imagine explaining the grim dark of 40k to your nan? Yeah, exactly. No, I just mean like I can. I sort of. I like that idea of like, you know, some like old, you know, older guy, like in this, you know, 60 to 80 kind of, you know, and then and like they used to be, uh, I don't know, some physical job. Used to be like a, a used to be a carpenter or something doing. Um, frames for houses or whatever and then they're too old and busted to do that anymore and they're like all they're like bummed because they can't build carpentry anymore but then they're like then they find out about total war and they can they can do that and they're like wicked my life is complete now but you know i don't know that wasn't really like a any sort of realistic statement of something that i think would happen it was more just like a little fantasy just a nice just a nice fantasy you're like that'd be nice Man, this lord just beat the crap out of my, all my my heroes over here. Not much fun. We did not enjoy that. Set up a charity that donates volumes of 40k to old people's homes. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I kind of regret not going for Lords the whole time now. Um, Fermentide 2 is getting a versus mode. Oh, that sounds really cool. Why Why are they doing it in Fermentide 2? Why don't they do it in... Um, I can't, maybe they want to experiment with Fermentide 2 first and, you know, only do it in Dark Tide once they've confirmed it's going to work so that they don't get any negative publicity or something. That would be pretty cool though. I assume you mean like with two squads going in against each other. Like invading each other's uh, instances or whatever.
Yeah, help me just because it's not bad. You have my favor. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I don't think we didn't think this through properly, did we? Um. Destruction for all. Yeah, one chest and might one chest might have to have a rest as well. And uh, who else do we need in our squad? Yes. Yes. Yeah, just look by that though. Oh, that way everyone can get some replenishment. Yeah, I'd be a bit happier. Fourth Lord as well. Um that's Lord Iron Skin. Yeah, that's okay, I guess. I reckon a Zeech Lord of Metal would be good. Nah, it's pretty much you always want to go fire and then transition into Zeech Lord of Zeech, Lore of Zeech, yeah? I reckon metal metal is metal metal is pretty good metals each metal so with metals each metal you just get the 10 percent reduction in cost for spells which is you know not really very useful for like storm of um or uh, whatever call it is um i suppose it's good um for um final transportation All right, so, oh, okay, I thought this was the Eye of the Gods, but now this is just a random thing. A unit experience gain or character experience gain? Uh, I think unit experience gain because we can't really keep up with the, we already can't keep up with the soul's cost of upgrading our heroes as it is, so. Okay, so I think what we want to do here, because these guys have only got one settlement left. So I think what we want to do is have them take this back. Uh, it's not really going to happen though, is it? This is not a walled settlement, is it, man? So, and these guys... Yeah, so we'll... Actually, can we recruit a heap of... Uh... I wonder how much, um... That is a Doesn't look like we'd need too much... ...there. Yeah, I could, could do that, but yeah, I probably won't bother. I mean, it'd be ni it would have been nice to get them, but... Yeah. I'll 
Let us corrupt. Never stop. Destroy. All right, got another vassal. So these guys are all like, um, like Yuri. They're all like chaos infected Kislevites now that think that they're protecting the motherland, but really they're just giving into the promise of power. Now they will see true power. True they power. They will be dominated. Your defiance is noted. I am pleased. We shall weave the fates. Move. All right. Um. Oh, can we get any... Oh, yeah, we can get some cool stuff. Um, oh, how much money do we have there? Oh, we're getting a little bit broke. This is decreed by me. I could just, um, like, let's screw it. Let's just betray them utterly. Let's utterly betray them. So we'll peace out, and we'll sell or them insult, at Oxgrad, you will die. and we'll take all, some of their money. Good. And then we'll just immediately declare war on them again, because that's the kind of badass Archaon is. He doesn't care about the, the rules of mortals or decency. I think the first thing he says when you start the campaign is about violating the corpses of his enemies. It's like the it's like number one thing, like the, the literally the first thing he says. Get a toxic trooper, very nice. Excellent. Oop, a bit more. Uh, Actually, I was going to go spread corruption, yeah. Good. Cool. Oh, yes. Alright. Very low treachery. They okay, occupy and vassalize the Bersenlings, but the Bersenlings don't currently exist. But that's okay. So we can. For now. Agree. Mortals will quail. You dare. Wipe them out. Okay, now we've got another vassal there. And then this guy can also go over here and gift to vassal. And now we've got another vessel. So, yeah, so now we, in one fell swoop, we've gone from two vessels to like six, I think now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six vessels now. So we're getting um, 150, 150 souls per turn. From our six vessels plus our technology we got plus 60 percent 
and then another plus 20% from our two um, students. So we got 180% technology now. So we're getting up to we're getting up to like double tech speed now, which is pretty good. Thir only 13 turns now to get this. And we've um and we've established our reputation as uh oh, betrayers. Or oh, look at the Skaven. Oh, that, I thought that was like four full stacks, but yeah, so they got two full stacks. Plus two empty stacks there. Yes. A act. I foresee destruction. All right, it's pretty nice. Um, four K gold, two K souls, plus three new vassals equals a good turn. Exactly, and all we had to do was. Uh, betray some uh some enemies that we made promises to my lord Again, doesn't, doesn't mind at all so yeah prague is a nice um yeah prague's a nice city oh actually how's kids live oh she got five settlements so she's pretty still pretty serious um yeah i don't think i'm gonna fortify this or anything i will just keep going just try to keep pushing through and um And go after um infestus but yeah i might um i, I did I, I got started a little bit late today so i might just um finish that first stream there um we're definitely playing this one again tomorrow but um but yeah i want to get a couple of hours of um of chaos gate in at least as well so i don't want to like go go too hard on this campaign um so yeah it's only like a weird little three hour stream to get started on our account but but that's right we'll do like a proper like you know six or eight hours of account tomorrow to get this get this campaign rolling properly but um but yeah thanks for all your uh your input uh for those of you who voted on the polls um so i'm gonna start a new campaign i'm gonna start a new stream um right now um for uh chaos gate which is uh if you haven't seen it before it's a warhammer 40,000 um based uh game so turn-based strategy kind of thing it's it's very similar to xcom 2 it's basically xcom 2 but with um gray knight terminators so if you're interested in checking out a bit of that we just started a new campaign um yesterday um, what was the day before oh uh, yeah you just started a new campaign we're on day we're on day 87 so yeah pretty early in our cascade campaign and we we're uh, cheesing, cheesing the, uh, cheesing the Colitis Assassin to basically solo all the missions while our other knights just kind of follow her around. That's our strategy at the moment. So yeah, if you want to check that out, um, we'll I'll host over to that in just a second. Um, that up. Alrighty then. Alright, I'll see you guys over there in just a moment. <laughs> 